Yeah, baby. Don't play with it, baby. You know where you at, baby. It's hood stocks, baby. Let's go. We a little late. It's raining outside, baby. You know motherfuckers in LA don't like to drive in the rain. Can I get a moment of your time? Smoke a little, uh, life's a game of chess Drugs, guns, who just got me on the run Let me shine a little light Can I get a moment of your time? Let's go, baby Smoke a little, uh, life's a game of chess Drugs, guns, who just got me on the run Let me shine a little light A group on the 50, yeah. love my whole city Got the little ones with me, I ain't going back to prison House with a yard, I get my own unlocks I walk my own yard, yeah. I'm Figaro and Filthy Where I come from, dog, everybody's Filthy. Get your hands dirty with them concrete burpees. Beer runs and licks. My heart was made, dog, with every single brick. Legend in my own. I get my little shine on. Got a house loan. I see a hater smiling. Broke with a mouthful. Run with my ninjas. Used to gun with my ninjas. Used to split top ramens on the hood with my ninjas. Can I get a moment of your time? Smoke a little. Uh, life's a game of chess. Drugs, guns, who just got me on the run? Let me shine a little light. Yeah. Can I get a moment of your time? Smoke a little, uh, life's a game of chess. Drugs, guns, who just got me on the run? Let me shine a little light. A 53 Thorta, Johnny's on the corner. Was on the My jeez, I see you motherfuckers tapping in, man. Yeah, baby. Motherfuckers are solid as they come, baby. The goon squad, man. Shit. Rick, give him a little love, baby. Whoop, you already know. Goonies, I see you, baby. That's right. Tap in. Tap in, baby. Hit that like. Hit that subscribe if you haven't done so yet. Um, I'm going to sip on this shot right here like it's some hot cocoa because it is raining outside right mm. now, you know? And this is this this hit like hot cocoa, you know what I mean? Does it? Does what, it? Well, when you, when you drink hot cocoa, what does it do to your insides? Right, it warms you up. Warms you up. Yeah. What does this tequila do? It warms you up. There you right. go, baby. Oh. There you go. Let me hit one of these buttons. I ain't hit one of these buttons in a Get cool lucky. minute. <laughs> we got to upgrade these buttons, bro. There's nothing but dick and all this other weird shit on these buttons, bro. <laughs> Fucking Casey, bro. <laughs> he loaded these buttons up with he nothing but dick. He left the over here. Hey, put somebody else he on loaded this. them up with nothing but dick, Rick. What the fuck? <laughs> That's cray cray. Hey, we gonna, I'm gonna take one more sip of this shit. We're gonna pay some bills and we're gonna go, hey, dog, run we got, it, run it. got a banger for you motherfuckers right here. Banger, don't play with it. And no pressure either, sir. No worries. Uh, hold on. Looking for some good quality cannabis. I mean, killer quality cannabis. Hit the folks at Killer Kush. They specialize in bringing you the best quality available for the OG do exotic. They got it all, baby. Hit them up at Killer Kush underscore underscore on four, uh, underscore underscore 420 on Instagram. And matter of fact, I got two locations where you can pick up the Killer Kush product, baby. The first location, and follow them on Instagram at True Organics Whittier. And that address is 13800 Leffingwell Road. That. This is the new address in Whittier. This is the new address in Whittier. Hold on, let me turn this up right here, man. <clears throat> Shit, this is the new address in Whittier. Um, bop, bop, and the second location to pick up Killer Kush. Uh, follow them on Instagram, at East LA Exotics, and that address is 6009 East Olympic Boulevard, East Los Angeles. Hey, our next sponsor is Roulette Printing. Roulette Printing is your one-stop shop for all your printing, <laughs> printing projects. From start to finish, Roulette Printing will walk you through the printing process and get you the quality prints you need. Conveniently located in the city of Huntington Park off Slauson and Maywood. My ninja, please Google and follow all their platforms, and that is at Roulette Printing. Okay, looking for the best criminal defense attorney in the city of Los Angeles? Look no further. Uh uh. Doug Sherrod is our guy, and he can be your guy as well. Mr. Sherrod used to be a federal prosecutor as well as a district attorney for the city of Los Angeles. He didn't like the unfair politics on that side of the fence. Now he's going to bat for individuals that have been wrongfully accused. Uh, wrongfully accused, excuse my verbiage, uh, my pronunciation, as I should say, or just had a bad weekend. You can reach Mr. Doug Sherrod at KingKongLawyer.com, KingKongLawyer.com, Orange County, stand the fuck up, gutter phenom is a lifestyle brand that is dedicated to supporting individuals who are determined to uh, achieve their dreams. We believe that no matter where you come through and what you've been through with hard work and dedication, anything is possible, okay? I want you guys to fuck. This is my boy. Fuck with the, the, my boy right here, RJ, all right? Our boy, RJ, right here. Hey, this dude is a badass white boy, 
Orange County, and he's got a badass brand, which I'm just talking about, and it's called Gutter Phenom, gutterphenom.com, gutterphenom.com. When you wake up in the morning, you're gonna hear me saying gutterphenom.com. I mean, swing by the website and see what it do for you, baby. You might say something that you like, and if you like, see something that you like, use uh, promo code uh, Hoodstocks20 to receive 20% off your order today. And matter of fact, I wanna give a big uh, big shout out to my boy Danny out in Texas, baby. Deja, stand the fuck up. Hey. La Conecta. Yes, Hoodstocks is sponsored by La Conecta. I want you guys to go to shoplaconecta.com, use Hoodstocks, and get 20% off your order today. All right, guys. Let me slow down real quick. Let me ease into this shit, you know? Mm-hmm. Nobody likes it when you just pull your dick out and just start fucking, like, crazy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Nah. Yeah. You know, there's got to be a little bit of yeah, foreplay. Exactly, you know I mean? exactly. You always got to have a little... Up. I got to warm it up, Warm baby. it up, warm it up. Exactly. <laughs> so, that's it right there. Ooh, oh, up. Jesus. Um, <laughs> ooh, dirty finger. <laughs> hey, uh, yeah. You lick your when you lick your finger and you realize you haven't washed your hands all day. <laughs> that means you're licking everything else you've touched. Oh shit! Jeez. Okay. Oh, hold up! Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> That's a lot of shit. <laughs> That's a you lot. know what I mean? Like, who knows what the fuck you touch on it? I want everybody to give a warm welcome to my G, Carlos Ramirez. Thank you, thank you. Uh, first of all, Lucky, I just wanted you. Uh, uh, just let you know that I'm thankful and grateful for you for having me on here. I never, dude, I watch all your podcasts. I watch not all of them, but I watch a lot of them. And uh, I, I never think that you know I'd end up in the seat right here. It's so crazy. It's just like wow, you know. Um, uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm grateful for uh, you know having me on here. Appreciate you. Um, I've seen a lot of gangsters uh, come out on, on your podcast. Uh, I'm, I'm no gangster. Uh, I'm just a mechanic out of Pomona, you know, a normal dude. Uh, but I have been through some gangster shit in the city of Pomona. You know, I was born, I was raised in Pomona, so you know, my my, my story starts here. You know, uh, shit. Well, well, we'll take it back. We'll take it back to uh, you know the the childhood traumas I have. You know what I mean? I want to talk a lot about my my father, and uh, you know, he's a big big uh, big part of my story. You know what I mean? Uh, Unfortunately, I, I grew up in a dysfunctional family. You know what I mean. My father was an alcoholic. He was in, uh, you know, he liked to mess it around with the low, the low cocaine, and uh, you know that shit always gets people, you know, fucking amped up and you know shit like that. So, you know, um, <clears throat> and, um I, I can take it as far back as like, uh, you know, when I was my first memory of, of my trauma. You know, because I've, I've dealt with uh, a lot of, uh, there I've had a lot of therapy and stuff, things of that nature. So I've, I've always you know there's one thing that i'll just never forget there's this just picture in my mind this little video <clears throat> so this was um i was somewhere around the age of uh uh between three and four years old uh somewhere around 1994 it's crazy that i could remember this right um and i've confirmed with my mother i've confirmed with my father that i was uh somewhere in between getting three years old going on to four and anyways this um this first trauma i have is uh being under, uh, we used to live in Monrovia, right, uh, in some apartments, and, uh, you know, uh, so this first memory I ever have of, of, of trauma is uh, being under the bed, and um, I was, uh, my, my father had a, a, a brown pit bull at the time, and uh, I was under the bed with the pit bull next to me shaking, and I was crying, and um, all I remember was just shit flying, like fucking plates flying across the room, and screaming, and fucking... Just, just you know, it's fucking crazy. It just, you know, for, for for me being so young and innocent, like I didn't know what the fuck was going on at the point. You know what I mean? I, I was, I was, I don't know. I, I didn't have no clue. You know what I mean? I, I, I think about it now, and it's like, you know, I understand exactly what was going on that day, and I'll go later on to talk about why. You know, what I mean, what I'm talking about. Let's but, take it um, real quick, brother. I yeah. want to, I want to fix your mic, though. There you go. Sorry about that, dog. Is that good? That and, and and I and you, yeah, They're right there. That old. And you know, brother, one thing about hoodstocks is, and I want to just t- t- rewind it a little bit. This is how we started, bro, with just regular dudes sharing their journeys, brother. Exactly. You know, 
Some people are going to say, why would you have a mechanic on and not lefty gunplay when you can have lefty gunplay in here? Because you know what? I want to, I'd rather sit with a mechanic and hear his story, yeah. especially since I know you too. Of course. Of course. And, and I know you a fucking good dude. You a solid dude. You've been, we'll, we'll get about that. We'll talk about that later, later. bro. Mm -hmm. You know, but, um, we talk about trauma. You know, you're four years old and you remember this yeah. trauma. You remember being underneath the bed with this brown pit bull. Even the pit bull was scared. Yeah. But that was the master that was fighting. Yes, that was my father and my mother that were going at it. Um, was this an everyday, was this on a, 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 an occurrence that happened a lot? This, fighting, throwing dishes? This, I, this, specific, uh, tr this specific picture uh, was the beginning of the everyday fighting from there forward. Um, I don't know if I, should I just say now why exactly was there for fighting? Because I know at this point why. Yeah, was why? why? Why was there so, so much fighting in the household <laughs> besides pop? You know, Pop was high, he was drinking. Yeah, but that, that, that really has nothing to, I mean, okay, yeah, it takes some, yeah, but here's the, here it is. So the reason that fight, and you know, I later found out in life, like maybe way later uh, when I was, uh, you know, not too long ago, but so that fight, that night, that trauma I had <clears throat> was the night my father uh, told my mother that, uh, you know, he had the neighbor pregnant, the na uh, neighbor downstairs, a girl, lady pregnant, you know, and, and, uh, and he told my mother, like, you know, she's, you know, she's pregnant and uh, she's having our baby. She's having our child. Yeah, that's that's what he said, you know. And, uh, you know, my mom didn't take that lightly. So shit just got wild and, and fucking that's when all the shit start flying and, and shit, you know, got yeah heated real quick. I mean, obviously, you'd understand anybody would fucking, you know, it takes a lot of it takes a lot of balls. Uh, usually dudes would uh, try to hide that as much as possible so that. That says a lot. I mean, I wonder what the thought was behind your pops having to say, hey, you know what? I need to come clean he, with my wife. Yeah. he. I mean, he had balls to do that shit. You know That's balls, I mean? bro. Yes. And I, you know? I, you know. I think I would have played that off all the way all the way down to the eight months mark. You know what I mean? <laughs> all the way through. Uh, you know, waited till the baby was born. <laughs> that's, that's next level shit right there, bro. Uh, yeah, but no. Hey, he, neighbor. How you doing? <laughs> hey. How's the kid? <laughs> Beautiful baby. Yeah, no, he's looking good. <laughs> <laughs> Looks a lot like me for some odd reason. <laughs> Pops was a pimp. Yeah, so, no, he wasn't a pimp. Um, my he's, father just, um, <clears throat> so I'll go into a little bit about his background. So my father was raised by his grandfather uh, because my grand, my grandfather, my da my dad's father, um, and it's crazy because it's a cycle. Um, my grandfather left uh, my father's mom and uh, ended up getting with another lady and having kids with her, and he left them behind, and uh, so. My dad had a resentment towards him, and he was there for him a little bit in the beginning. Don't, don't, I'm not saying he just walked out. He might, I think he walked out on them when my dad was about. Uh, they were. They had. My dad came to U.S. He crossed. He crossed over from Mexico over here when he was about 15. So he tells me that around 16, uh, 17 years old, my my grandfather found a girl out here. But he didn't like leave the, the family. But he. It was of a. Uh, we're we're gonna. We're, me and my son are gonna go across and then make money and then be providing. You know what I mean? Like yeah, they, they, yeah. Were, they were looking for the American dreams. You know, like you know, provide for the family. And this is this is your pops and his father and his father, which is your grandfather. Mm -hmm. They were telling the family on the Mexico side, "Hey, we're gonna go back. We're gonna get this mm -hmm. bag, and then we'll be, be back. sending back." No, we. Yeah. So my father actually originally tells me all the time. Originally, he came with an intention of buying. A, I believe it was a 1960 or 70 Ford F100 pickup truck. Um, that was his dream. He wanted to come over here, make money, buy the truck, and go back. And then, and then be able to use that truck to make money in the homeland. Or no, it was just one of those sick ass trucks back in those days. You know what I mean? Yeah. It was a truck that it was sought out for, and, and everybody, you, whoever had it, was shit type of deal. So and so he wanted it. <laughs> so he was 15. He said, "I'm going out there and I'm gonna fucking hustle and I'm gonna fucking get that shit and I'm gonna come back." You know? And he was. I, I kind of love that story, bro. He was telling my grandfather this. My grandfather, his grandfather. I'm sorry. Yeah. His grandfather, this, and uh, you know, he tells me all day. Nowadays, it's different because he tells me like, you know, the shit that he's accomplished up until this day. He's like, you know, how much I wish my grandfather would be here today to fucking see everything I've accomplished. Yes. And. 
I've told him, like, you know, he's watching you. He, he's, he's, you know, he's here. Like, you know, I believe that's just how I, I think. You know, what I mean, like, he, he's watching you, and he's, you know, I've told him things like that. But um, you, you, yeah. can't, you I want to, and yeah, I, I wish, I want to, I want to speak a little about your family because I know, I know your family from how I know him. And so right. I'd like to say how I know him and just to kind of like ease the pressure off you a little bit because I know you're a little nervous, bro. Yeah, definitely. You're, of course. You're, you're nervous and I want you to just lighten up and feel good about this, bro, because this is a, a will be a part of your legacy and this will always be up, bro. For sure. And um, people will know the mechanic from Pomona after today everywhere, bro. <laughs> you feel right. me? So I just want you, to, I want you to feel good about this, bro. I still bro. can't believe it. Ease into this. <laughs> so... I moved to the SGV probably about five, six years ago. About six, yeah. Six years ago, mm -hmm. okay, f from my hood, with my girl, we bought a crib, you know, little little babies, babies were small. And anyways, while well, I'm out that way, you know, I don't know nobody in, in, in the area that I'm at, and uh, I need to find a mechanic out there in SGV, right? And so, you know, I cruise in the fucking Pomona and shit, and um, usually there's a lot of shops in the hoods. And I would say Pomona is the hood hood of SGV. You know what I mean? In regards to like, just like, <laughs> you mm -hmm. know, like it, it, motherfucking shit is all the way activated. You know what I mean? F to this day, there's prostitutes walking up and down on Holt Boulevard. You know what I mean? I don't think there's prostitutes anywhere in the SGV. Well, there probably are in the, the, the honey, little hidden hideouts and spots where you know you know, you know what I mean? But right, to we, be flat we get out. It, we get it. We, ah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> chill, chill, chill. <laughs> chill on the prostitutes, hey, bro. come on, bro. Hey, but I'm just <laughs> saying, it's city, hood, so, yeah. Nah. Hey, well, as long as you're not out there no, walking, bro. You know what no, I mean? You're uh, good. Well, what the fuck? Okay. <laughs> no, uh, why does your mic keep going limp, bro? I don't know. What's wrong with it? Give me another one. Hold on. <laughs> Anyways, long story short, bro, I want to say this. So I was looking for a mechanic. I pull into his his father's spot. Big dogs right there. Fam, whole family works there. You know, what I mean, if you put, if you happen to show up during lunchtime, you'll see mom right there, and they got a whole spread cracking off. You know what I mean? Like that. You know what I mean? And uh, you know, I get my shit fixed. Cool. Bop bop bop. Transaction. Everything worked out right. Bam, we're talking six years, going there and getting my shit fixed. Different vehicles that I get. And they were always so nice and my boy was just like professional as shit and legit, you know, and always treated me right. And so, mind you, I'm a Jew, right? So this isn't the first spot I'm going to. I go get I go get a quote over here and then I'll be like, well, let's see if uh, Carlos, you know what I mean? Cause he's uh, Carlos Jr. and his dad is big Carlos, right? Yes. And so I said, well, let me go. And so I, every time I go there, bro, price would be dramatically changed, you know what I mean? And so I would go there and pay less and get better, probably better work than I was get done at this other spot, you know? They always treated me right. They always treated me right, always loved, all that shit. So you treat me right, you do me right, I wanna give you the same in return. I think there was a turning point in our relationship, you know, of me being a customer, and I'll say it this. I pull up to pay and, and I said, and I, I knew what they told me, how much it was. And he go, and I said, hey, my boy, how much I owe you again? And he told me the price, but it was $200 less. Now, these are the people that have been taking care of me for X amount of years, you know? And now he's, now he's, he's probably, I, I see this dude busy, his whole family, dude, their shop is popping, bro. Everybody's in and out of that bitch, the whole neighborhood, dog. Fuck with they shop, dog. Straight up, you put, you try to get in there and everybody's trying to get their shit done by them, bro. So obviously you see that and then you get the work done multiple years, myself, hey, you already know the shit legit. But anyways, I know the dude's busy and he told me a price that was $200 less than what he quoted me and I said, nah, dog. It, was, it wasn't $600, dog. It was $800 you told me, bro. And, and you know, you guys have always treated me right, dog, and I don't ever wanna, you know what I mean? Yeah. You know, and bop. That's how I feel like. So from there on, me and the homie, I mean, we were always cool, but we, I, I, we became, I, I believe that he's one of my friends because he helps me out in, in different levels. You know, we, I, I believe that we have become friends, you know. Yes. Um, but his family and his pops, I mean, hardworking Mexicanos in the neighborhood, doing the neighborhood right, bro. Yes. You know, you do the neighborhood right, bro. The neighborhood loves you. I was there one time and there was this black chick, older black chick. And, and, and you know, hey, 
I mind my own business, but you know, my ears are open. I hear it. And I guess Pops, your Pops had worked out a deal with her payments. Oh, yeah. You feel me? Yeah. Because sometimes in the neighborhood, dog, you don't got it. You ain't got that lump sum. And I heard that shit, dog. And that shit hits different, dog. Because this, not only are they giving you the good prices and good fucking bomb ass work, bro, honest fucking mechanics, bro. And there's a lot of crooked mechanics, bro. A lot. And I don't want to be long winded about this, but I would just want to emphasize, bro, that his family, bro, is fucking legit family in what they do, bro. They take pride in their fucking work, exactly. dog. They take pride in what we do. And and, and, and they're honest the fucking people, business. bro. You know, and, and since then, bro, I just like, homie, you, uh, what, $200? Fuck that. Like, I could have pocketed that $200, dog. And, and you know what I mean? But fuck that, dog. I, I take care of the people that take care of me. And, bro, you busy right now? You, nah, dog, you told me this. But, um. Uh, and you know what? That's crazy because I told you this before. But I was actually, uh, I was actually just trying to hook you up, bro. Because I, I love the way you carry yourself. And, and, you know, how you were always, you know, you always give me a tip. You were always, you know, bro, giving me words of wisdom. You know what I mean? Every time you'd come over. I didn't even know I was doing and, that, bro. <clears throat> you know, to be honest with you, I, I that day I was in charge. So. I, I was honestly trying to give you a fucking hood price. Like, I was trying to hook you up. <laughs> and you were like, nah, nah. I was like, bro, just do it. Go. Like, you know what I mean? I, really, I was really trying to hook him up. You know what I mean? Like, like, like the famous Droop says, my bad. My bad. <laughs> hey. Uh, yeah, I didn't know that, bro. Yeah, I just thought you were swamped with work, bro. And You know, and yeah, that happens a lot also. You know what I mean? We, we do make mistakes. I'm not perfect. You know what I mean? My family, we, we stay real busy, so... Yeah, that could happen. I could see where you can see that that might have been the issue. But in, in reality, I didn't want to tell you either because I didn't want you to. I don't know. I was just kind of like not going to be like, hey, fool, I'm trying to hook you up. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. I was for just sure. like, hey, just give me this and you're good. Don't trip. Yeah. You know? But yeah. I like, felt like I was already getting hooked up, so I didn't want to take it any further advantage. Right. You know what I mean? Then I already feel like I was getting a good deal. But, anyways, yeah. a little background about how me and the homie, we've known each other for six years, dog. You know, and uh, I fuck with this dude heavy. He's my guy when it comes to anything with cars, bro. This dude, you man, I'm telling you, we're going to give you all the plugs for you guys to connect with him because this is an honest dude and he'll tell you what it is. But let's get back in your story and so it kind of blew my mind when we started talking he started telling me all this shit about your past and I'm like son of a bitch dog and I thought about it for a long time this is I thought we you know I've known this about him for a cool minute and finally I was just like dog let's get you on the podcast and the main thing is is because he just opened up his own shop you know what I mean and everything that he's been through I, I want to promote this dude big time, but first we're going to share his story, and then after that, you know what I mean? If you if you love everything you hear or you feel you relate, I mean, a lot of mechanics probably listen in right now, dog, that have been through the same shit, you know what I mean? Um, support and shout out to all the mechanics in the city, baby. You know what I mean? You motherfuckers are important, bro, you know? And uh, Hood Stars is shining light on motherfuckers like you right here with the homie Carlos. That's right. And so, this this you, you're under the bed, but you find out that this was Pops. Yeah. yeah, go ahead. 1994. Yeah, I was under the bed. And, uh, you know, at that point, like I said, I didn't I had no idea what was going on. But uh, I later, later in life found out that, you know, my father was having an affair with the neighbor. And at that day, specifically, he had told my mother that, you know, he, he, she was pregnant, you know. And my mother, my mother, my mom didn't take it lightly. So she started throwing shit at my dad and yelling and you know that's when i ran into the bed and that's when that that that's that memory um that's the first memory i have like that's just it's always a memory that i'll never forget it sticks with me it's like it's a trauma to have you know <clears throat> but from there forward it, it just became uh it, it became an everyday thing like you were saying you know I mean, not maybe every day but it was a consistent fucking always fighting i have a question for you real quick Go ahead, brother. brother so you said you found out about this recently. Whatever happened recently, right? Mm, not too recently. I mean, this, I maybe I found out about this uh, maybe like 10 years ago. 10 years ago, okay. Not too recently. What happened to the child? What happened with the child? Oh, here we go. So, <laughs> here Should we, we go. not touch that? Or what? No, we're getting there. We're okay, getting there. go ahead. So, Shoot your stuff, bro. Yeah, so she was pregnant, right? Uh, she ended up having uh, her daughter, my son's daughter, Valeria. That's her name. But wait, wait, you're, you're... So my father had the affair. She got, she was pregnant, and then, yeah, they went along, and, and they had the baby. Valeria Reynoso, that's her name. That's my sister's name. I, I, I call her a sister. I don't care what people like. I just say I have a sister. That's my sister. You know what I mean? Like, I grew up, you know, we we didn't meet till maybe uh, when I was 15, 14, you know, 13, I think I was when we met. And, um, 
that's when we met, you know what I mean? But I, I, I that's, you know, I, every time I see her, I give her a hug and a kiss. Like, that's my sister. Yeah. You know, but, but yeah, um, that was her. Um, so like I was saying, so, so you know what I mean? Like, you know, it was an everyday thing. I have a lot of other fucking pictures in my in my my mind where, you know, fighting, always fighting because it just wasn't. You know, I don't know how the fuck my mom did it, but she she was still there with him. You know what I mean? Um, and uh, she still hung, hung by his side. Yeah, she no loved matter him. what. But 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 there was, she was. Tell not. me about your mom, bro. What kind of woman is she? <sighs> my mother. She's she's a loving, caring, strong woman. Because of all the shit she, my dad's put her through, and she's still fucking going. You know what I mean with she, him? Yeah, like she's still with him, still fucking. You know. Um, what would put a what 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 would you say that would keep a a, a a female like that with still with her dude? I mean, she was she old school. You feel me? She has an old school traditions she, where she's just like, you know what, shit happens. You know. She came from uh, she came from from Mexico where. Uh, you know, sometimes men do have two women. You know what I mean? Okay. Uh, my uh, actually, her father had. She had multiple sisters and brothers from different fathers, uh. same mother. So she came from a family where you know it was a norm to fucking have you know, to be having, you know, multiple baby daddies or whatever you want to call that. But um, you know, the fathers were always. No, wait, I'm sorry. That, I think that came off wrong. No, so she. it was more of like, you know, her father had other kids with other women as well. Yeah. So so when it happened in her household underneath her roof, then it yeah, just... it wasn't fly because she didn't go with it, but, but obviously, you know... It like, wasn't foreign to her, though, either. Nah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, so there was a lot of fighting going on, and... Uh, Is that normal within, the, like, uh, Mexicanos, like, in Mexico? Like The machistas, though, the way they are, yeah, yeah. So it's old school, old school, old school. Yeah, they they want to have two wives, and okay. my my father was unfortunately, like I said, his father. It was a cycle. It, it became a cycle um, because my father, like grandfather, has you know, still with. He's not with my grandmother. They never got divorced, but he's got another woman that's a lot younger, and he's got kids with her. You know what I mean? And I have a fucking uncle that's like fucking. I'm 33. He's uh, 26, 27. You know what I mean? Yeah. I have a knee, uh, an aunt that's uh, 18, 17, you know what I mean? Yeah. Half sister to my brother, my dad. <laughs> that's good. Cool. Wild, though, wild. Yeah. Wild, you know what I mean? That's that good life. That's a lot of tequila, baby. That's a lot of fucking. And Perix. A whole lot of that. <laughs> a whole lot of that. And that's part of, that's part of my story, you know what I mean? Yeah, you've followed in the footsteps, baby. Let's get the man another one. Modelo. Does, uh, does Modelo, is your, uh, what's your I, choice of I beer, like, bro? I like Modelo uh, Oro, but I like Tuchelada as well. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's a they were clowning me about the flavored beer, bro. You no, know this what I mean? is good, bro. This is, yeah, this is they said Lucky I, fell out his chair with flavored beer. When I'm, when I'm, <laughs> <laughs> this is the shit I drink when I'm uh, hungover, you know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. Yes, yes, uh, a third floor up, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Take the elevator. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh shit! All right, so I lost the train track. There. Where was I? Um, and I'm glad he did what I asked you to do, or I recommend you to do. He made a timeline, everybody. You know, so yeah. I think it's important for people when they come on the podcast and they're going to share their story that they make a timeline. You know, to stay on track and make sure right. they don't miss any points. And that's the thing, because I, I um, honestly, I've shared a lot. You know what I mean? In meetings. You know, I've I've been part of a twelve step program many times, and I've shared a lot. And every time I share, it sucks because I get real nervous. You know what I mean? Right now, I feel good because I'm just literally in front of a camera and a couple guys, you know, a couple little friend, one friend, you know, and uh, yeah. you. Yeah. So it feels good. It's cool. You know, the environment's like, all right, cool. I feel comfortable. Absolutely. But sharing in front of different people uh, makes me really nervous. I get real nervous. And so when I tell my story, it, I, zip, I zip through it. Boom, 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 and then because it's like anxiety. Yeah, I get anxiety exactly. Yeah, so, just... so I zip right through it, and um, there's so much good information that I missed, like so much message through it that I could have shared. And the fucked up part is that when I finish and I get off the stage, because you know I've shared a lot of different little, you know, um, meetings and stuff, and um, I get off and I sit down and I'm like, fuck, like 
I could have said this. Damn, like I forgot about saying this. I forgot that. You know, I forgot this. All my shit was like fucking. I jumped from one year to another, back yeah. and forth. The story didn't really. Yeah. You know, it was just yeah. So that's why you, when you told me to do a timeline, I was like, that's perfect because I get like that. So I'm like, I'll be able to look at it and say like, okay, cool. We're going year by year of what what my life was like. You know what I mean? Absolutely. So definitely good so idea. T- so take your time, brother. You know, breathe. Drink. Let's man another shot. I'll take another shot too, dog, please. Right here, Mondo. Mondo. <laughs> My boy Mondo. Mondo Castillo. Concrete, baby. Don't play with it. Been through a lot of shit, man. Yeah, and, uh, so where, where were we? We were with the so yeah, so my dad was that was the night that my, my mother my mother found out about that. What not? Um uh, and from there forward, I have a lot of different uh, traumas, a lot of different situations. Uh, like, what other traumas do you have? Well, I mean, what I mean is, like, I have a lot of other pictures where they were fighting. It was constant fighting in your house. Constant fighting. I mean, I think that's the, that's an average thing within a within a household. I mean, she lived downstairs from us, you know what I mean? So that's so, why the fighting kept going. Yeah, because regardless of that, my dad kept going down, going down. My dad would take off, you know, and be doing his thing down there. I would have just put a hole in the floor, bro. I would have put a staircase. <laughs> but you know, a hole, you put a hole in the no, floor and then you lay on it, bro. A hole in the floor? You know, what the? Yeah, and then you got a fucking dick fixture up there, bro. You know what I mean? And then she can <laughs> just. <laughs> <laughs> no? <laughs> I don't know. That sounds well, a little you got, bit. You got can lights and then you got a dick hanging out from the second floor, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you when the dick comes in, you know what that means, bitch. <laughs> the rent's due, bitch. <laughs> <You're> <laughs> I'm sorry, oh, dog. <clears throat> but yeah, there was a lot of different. I remember um, we lived in Monrovia, right? And um, I'll never forget. You know, we um, there was this market where we always used to go to, and um, fucking every time we. I remember just this specific time, but it was we was always arguments. But there's just a specific time where we were grocery shopping, and we were in the the um, fruit section, and. Um, my, my father kept telling my mother, like, you know, why, you know, why can't you just be cool with it? Like, why can't you just be okay? Like, why do you have to be always giving me this face? Why, you know, and uh, she was just like crazy, like, you know, not how, 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 maybe, how was that okay? You know, it was wrong, but he didn't see that. He, you know, he wanted to ju- her to just be okay with it. You know, that was always a topic, you know what I mean? Like, it's already done, it's over. Like, let me, let it be, you know, and my mother never, I mean, she stood by his side, but she was never okay with it to this day, you know what I mean? Because I'll be honest with you, to this day, my, my, later on, uh, I don't want to skip that for, I'll, I'll, I'm going to go like in year by year, but um, I have a half brother, another brother, Felipe. Is that the other neighbor? No, same 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 neighbor. Oh, same neighbor. Yeah, so no, so my not father. Only, not only did he break the news to her. So check it out, my father. It, yeah, no, my yeah. father ended up. Uh, he ended up raise, uh, providing for both, both my my mother and that lady. The neighbor became his. Yeah, not the neighbor. Yeah. Yeah. He ended up being a provider for both, you know, and. Uh, he would take care of her and her rent, and he would take care of our house, household. And so, you know, what's fucked up. That's, you, know, I, I, you know what, bro? A lot of people are going to hate me for this right here. Some people might hate me for this. But sometimes a motherfucker might sneak out at night and something like that might happen. And But they usually the other party gets left hanging dry. Your pops... Is, he made a little different. No, yeah. He, he, he made, took care of both households, He made bro. sure that he wasn't going to just... No, he he thought that that was better than what his father had done. And his because pops his, did what I would have done. His father bounced on that family and got with the new family. And you know what I'm saying? So yeah. he was like, nah, I'm providing for both. They're both going to get fucking... Well, take, they're going to be taken care of when not, you know? And so, yeah, he, prov- he began providing for both families. And... Um, uh, growing up, I was fucking broke. We were broke because my dad had to fucking provide for two families. He was never there for me uh, because he was always fucking working. Because 
obviously, like I said, he had a lot of fucking bills to pay. Two rents, two fucking, you know, uh, whatever, everything that he had, all the, uh, you know, it was two, 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 you know? Yeah. I mean, did it ever, did it ever, like, happen, like, one night you're eating, you're eating a, you know, bean and cheese burrito because, you know, he's providing for both families, but you open up the window and you start smelling steak coming from downstairs. Dig. <laughs> You're a fucking dick for that one. Come on. No, bro. Okay, like... I'm just wondering, bro. I mean, were there nights, dog, when they were eating steak <laughs> downstairs? You, That's you right. Were eating exactly. fucking Chef Boyardee upstairs, <laughs> dog. Food. No, dude, we were both fucking yeah. eating bean and cheese burritos, <laughs> okay. dog. We kept it even then, yes, bro. He's a dog. fucking good he, man, he was bro. Fucking He's doing, honest, No, bro. he wasn't more for them, more for us. He was okay. 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 Up top, yeah, right he was bottom. fucking, you know. <laughs> Damn, you're a fool. <laughs> fucking lucky, dog. I, you know, bro. If it wasn't for prison, bro. If it wasn't for, for prison, dog, I would have no excuse for my bullshit, dog. But everyone's like, he went to prison. <laughs> that's you good know? enough. Hey, that's the, 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 the best cop out you can ever have when you have multiple baby mamas. Oh, he's you, in prison. How, you many, know? how many you got? Hey, we got to talk about that, sir. We'll bring that in or later. <clears throat> we can bring it in as long as you'll bring yours in. I'll bring mine in. That's because what I'm I saying. know you've repeated the history. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and if I were you, I'd have showed up dressed like an Arabian prince, homie. <laughs> Because once, no I, white <laughs> because once I tell my old lady that I got the next door neighbors, I'm going to be in a motherfucking do 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 You know what I mean? I'm going to have a little fucking, I'm going to be looking like a 7-Eleven dude, dog. I'm going to be walking around. I'm going to have rubies on me, dog. You know what I mean? I'm fucking just like, bitch, I'm an Arabian prince. And where I come from, the Middle East, can have this shit six. is acceptable. You know what I mean? That's what we do. That's not a Cadillac. That's a camel. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh dog, cool, let's dog. go, baby. Hoodstocks all That's day, right. every day. That's hey, right. but anyway, so he, he, pops provided for both households, yes. and I and I and I apologize, brother, for my horrible sense of humor. But uh, this is just I how we it. do I it right it. here, dog. I we love have, it. I love we it. have fun, and it's very easy, dog. But I, I always see, uh, once again, I always see the comedic fucking uh, things in, uh, you know. Fucked up shit that happens in life, but that's life, bro. It's life. It is what it is, bro. There's you know? nothing you can do about it. And so <clears throat> he was so, doing his best he could to fucking what to his you know to his what his I you know what he did as best he could. Well, let me ask you this question, bro. Yes. Did he, is he a religious person? No. Okay, obviously not. No. So no, no how, no way was once was he was just like fucking trying to tell you some shit about the Bible, bro. Never. Because it's like, bro, you burning it? You already, you the devil? No, I'm just playing. Yeah. But, uh, to this day, he can't tell me shit. Because, yeah. You know. Well, good for him, no, bro. No, he does. I'm sorry. I don't want to say it like that, but yeah. I don't want to make him off like a fucking... Like yeah, a villain. Like a villain. No, of course well, You not. know what, bro? We're all villains, but guess what? Sometimes when you're watching a movie, you end up rooting for the villain, bro. You know what I mean? Because they need love too, bro. And they still, some villains are good people too, dog. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? That, that, that we, we are, uh, we, we keep the balance of life, baby. Of you course. You know what I mean? And, you and, know? You'll, and no, you'll see in the story that my father is, is my number one, you know, my number one supporter, sponsor, you know what I mean? Till this fucking day, you know? If it wasn't for him, um, I wouldn't be the person I am today. You know what I mean? If it wasn't for him teaching me, you know, that in order for you to obtain your goals, you have to fucking work your ass off. You know, you have to break. He has a certain way of saying it in Spanish, but say it in Spanish. Te tienes que sobar el lomo para para obtener lo que quieres. O sea, te tiene, you have to fucking break your back to fucking get what you want in life. Like, you know what I mean? If you want that shit right, he's always been the type of person that's very um, hardworking because that's what my grandfather showed him. You know what I mean? He's not a fucking, he's always, and we'll go a bit later in that, but uh, he's always been offered, like, you know, fucking deals to fucking launder money at the shop and stuff like that. And my father's always been, like, fucking legit, 100%. Never fucking fucked with nobody that has, you know, anything to do that's dirty. You know what I mean? He's one of those type of person that takes, cur that takes you know, pride in, in being a hardworking individual and not... Allowing anybody to just come in and be like, hey, I got fucking 100 grand. Let me put them in your shop and fucking, you know, let's buy you all this shit new. And, and you know, we'll, we'll see <coughs> the money comes in, you know. So so he abides by his by the law, but his dick abides by no, a whole other. That, you know, I mean, he's a man, dog. I can't, you know, what I mean, I can't say nothing about him. You know what I mean? I can't say nothing like that, but. I'm <laughs> 
I apologize again, bro. Hey, bro, your pops is always legit with me, and he's solid as shit, dog. But hey, bro, you know I gotta I give guess. it. Hey, of course, of yes, course. His, you know, his I, dick didn't abide by any motherfucking rules. Right? <laughs> there we go. There we go. Yeah, it's, at all. Like, at all. You know what I mean? Yes. Give a fuck. But um, yeah. So uh, when did you start experiencing with uh, drugs, bro? Let's talk about that. That 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 would jump a big. No, go ahead, dude. It keep would doing take your, a big leap in the story. Don't do it. So, do it. Do it how you want to do it, brother. So check it out. We lived in Monrovia, right? This was '94. So the arguing kept going on, 94, and um, 1996, we moved to Pomona. Uh, we we uh, we used to live on Arroyo and, and, and Dudley, right there on the, on the second house from the block, you know. And uh, I'll never forget the house because I have a lot of childhood memories there. But there was always still, you know, for some reason at that time, uh, shit was okay. Everything was okay for some reason. You know, it wasn't as much fighting because we had we had, you know, finally moved away from her which was the fucking issue. And yeah. my mother was happy that we were, you know, now living in a whole different city. We didn't have to see her because obviously my mother had to see her every time she fucking walked in the house and stuff. So it, it changed the, the, you know, the, 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 the dynamics, dynamics of, yeah. the, of, of everything. You know what I mean? Moving into Pomona and uh, yeah. So I have, I started, uh, I started going to elementary in uh, Arroyo, Arroyo elementary right there on Arroyo street in Pomona. And, um, you know, uh, so I'll tell you a little bit about my father. Um, my father, uh, growing up, he, you know, up until, let's see, up until about 1998, my father, since I was young, uh, used to take care of horses for, um, he used to take care of horses for people that were, uh, they were high-end horses for, for, they were jumping type horses, you know? Okay. And so he was a, a groomsman. I don't know what you call it. Groomsman. But yeah, but he used to take care of the horses, and he used to, like, walk them, train them, and all kinds of stuff. You know what I mean? He was always that guy. That's dope. And, um, you know, I, I always used to love to go to, uh, I'll never forget, you know what I mean? He used to work in a spot right here off of, uh, he used to work in a spot right there off Comina Hills. And uh, it was a big old fucking ranch, huge mansion. And, uh, you know, I grew up there. I learned how to drive there. I, I learned how to ride bike there, like dirt bikes. I did so many things there, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I remember, I, I love that place so much. One time, I'll never forget this time, you know. Um, he used to drive a little Volkswagen Beetle, right? Like an old one, you know, a little Volkswagen Bugs, right? Yeah. And I'll never forget this time. He, um, I, uh, he was heading out to work, and uh, I think I didn't have school that day. I think it was like a Saturday. And uh, fucking... I, I ran out, <clears throat> you know, I got ready, boom, boom, jumped in my clothes, and uh, I ran out and jumped in the fucking Volkswagen in the back seat, boom, boom, got, and like just threw myself in the bottom, and um, my father, you know, got, came out, you know, got in the car and started driving to work, you know, it's uh, from Pomona to Covina, it was like a little 15 minute drive, nothing major, but um, he got to the ranch where he worked at, you know, because it was a big ass ranch, and uh, as soon as he jumped off, I jumped out, bam. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, he's like, what the fuck? He's like, what are you doing here? I was like, I, I wanted to come to work with you, you know? Yeah. But he, he didn't really let me at that point because, you know, he, he had to be responsible and have, he was always taking care of the horses. He was always very busy and stuff. So, but I'll never forget that. You know what I mean? I used to love so much coming around him like that, that, uh, you know, I used to fucking sneak in, you know, I did that, you know? <laughs> wild, bro. It was just wild. That's cool, bro crazy as shit but um these are real life normal life memories bro and i think these memories are important bro and you know what dog I, these are these are the type of stories and podcasts that i love bro that mm -hmm. i love to hear brother and this yeah. is real life shit dog it is it is it is it's the reality of my life at least you know what i mean that's, yeah. that's the story of my life you know I'm, I'm sure a lot of people can relate i'm sure a lot of people had different somewhat you know similar but different things but um so we went on from there. He used to, um, he used to work there, and uh, I used to, uh, I loved it there, dude. He, he, and I ended up uh, getting into uh, horses. I ended up starting to ride horses uh, when I was out there. You know, somehow, some way, when I turned, uh, no, I don't know how old I was. I was maybe like eight, nine years old. But there was a training school for uh, jockeys for racing and and for jumping horses and stuff. And I wanted to do the jumping because that's where the money's at. You know what I mean? There was a lot of money in that in that uh you know that field yeah. or whatnot and uh yeah the, his boss my father's boss was like a fucking rich millionaire lady you know um 
And uh, she decided that uh, she invested in me. She sent me to school to train. And uh, I'll never forget that, you know, the training was, it was incredible. It was like, you know, it was in the middle of Azusa Canyons. Uh, I, for, I forgot the name of it exactly. Ra Rainbow Canyon. It was called Rainbow Canyon. Uh, I think Rainbow Canyon. I'm not sure. Training us. Uh, Academy or something like that. Yeah. But um, I used to go there in the summers, bro. And then uh, we, I used to, it was crazy because I was the only little Hispanic kid. All the other people were white, rich kids, bro. And I was fucking broke. And, and I was a broke little, you know, Hispanic kid. And I didn't fit in, dude. So I was it, was, it was crazy because I was, you know, all these kids were talking about their dads had mansions and houses. And the, the cars that would get dropped off of, they, you tell, they all came from fucking money. You know what I mean? My, my father was, you know, we were, we were. You know, we were poor. My father could barely, you know, provide for two. Imagine he's providing for two families. Remember that, you know. So I, I was always wearing, you know, like shit that was inexpensive. You know what I mean? I, I'll be honest with you. I, uh, I used to wear my swami shit. You know what I mean? That yeah. was that was the place for me to to shop. You know, the swami get something for a good deal. You know what I mean? And uh, but anyways, um, yeah, she ended up paying for my training for like two fucking years, and I was. Uh, I was a, a really good fucking writer. I used to write, you know, I, to, I, I got into it, you know, I was fucking, I was, anything I always get into, I always fucking put 100% into it. You know, that's how I like to do. You know what I mean? That's the way I carry myself. You know, I put myself, I put everything into it. You know what I mean? So I was, um, I put all my fucking energy into that and um, I was fucking good. I was fucking good. But somehow somewhere in between um i believe this was when my father bought the house in pomona uh he bought his first home in pomona in sintown what they call sintown you know shout out sintown that's where i grew up you know what i mean that's my fucking little area stomping grounds but um i started hanging out with different people you know it should change i was too cool to be fucking riding horses now now i was in the hood now i wanted to be like the hood niggas you know what I'm saying? Like, now I wanted to be fucking not a horse rider because to them, it was like, that's fucking bunk. That's lame. Like, who the fuck, you know, rich kids. Like, bro, if I would have chased that fucking, if I would have chased that horse shit, like, these, these, these type of horse, they make fucking hundreds of thousands in one fucking tournament. I'm like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. there would have been money there, bro. But my ignorance my you know i was young and stupid and i didn't know i was fucking i don't know 12 12 13 years old at this point and um started hanging out with people from the hood right there in sintown uh shit changed i left the horse shit um you know shit shit changed but let me take it back a little bit so um i want to emphasize as far as like um growing up right so i was into sports when i was maybe like eight years old right yeah <clears throat> i was into soccer and um, like I said, my father was providing for two families, so he had to fucking work every single day, fucking all day. And I say this because um, I was that kid that um, my mother was on the sideline. You know what I mean? My mother's always been fucking my fucking biggest fan, my biggest just supporter. supporter yeah. You know what I mean? Like, she loves me to this day, bro. Like, she's just... I love her to death, bro. Like she's done so much for me. You know what I mean? She was always there for me because obviously my father couldn't be there because, you know, he was fucking too busy working because he had to fucking do what he had to do. You know what I mean? He had to provide. And I didn't understand that at this point. But I say that to say this, that I fucking, I fucking felt like shit because all the other, all the you know, all the other soccer players had their friends, their dads and the mothers there, you know, cheering them on. And, um, all I had was my mother, and I kept looking out. I would always look out, you know, and my mom, see, that's the thing, is that my mother loves me so much that she doesn't want me to get hurt. So she would tell me, like, oh, your dad's going to come right now. Like, oh, he said he's going to come. But it was a lie. Like, my dad was never going to come. She just wanted me to be, like, she wanted to pump me up to fucking make me feel like, you know, to play good and stuff, you know what I mean? So she would always like, oh, va a venir ahorita, ahorita va a llegar, you know? He's going to show up right now. And, you know, I remember playing soccer and being just fucking zoned out, looking at the sidelines, like, where's my dad? Where's my dad? Where's my dad? You know, my mom was always just yeah, right there. Yeah, yeah, you know? But I was looking for my dad, you know what I mean? Because I wanted my dad to see what I was doing. I always wanted to show my dad that I fucking 
you know i wanted to make my dad proud always always that was my thing is like i want my dad to see that that um you know i'm good at whatever i do you know but unfortunately he was never there because like i said you know it's not that he didn't want to it was because he had fucking so much going on in his life you know he had a fucking prep for two families and um so he was never there um so i say that to say this that uh i ended up stopping sports because of that you know to this day you know i mean i feel like a fucking weirdo because you know people will be talking about some fucking games and and i'm just like i don't know what the fuck you're talking about like recently my daughter started playing basketball and it fucking sucks because um you know you got the fathers on the sidelines and i was there for my daughter this time you know i was bro everything that my father wasn't there for like i fucking do that shit for my kids today and i want to go into that later but what i'm saying is i left sports in general because i never wanted to feel like that again you know my father wasn't there and i wanted him to be there so it was like fuck this i don't want to fucking you know excuse my language but you know i mean i I just didn't want to feel like that it just felt like fucking shit you know it just felt bad like fuck you know he couldn't make it you know and um so I, I never really learned sports, you know. I mean, all I know was like soccer back then, and I was fucking young. Never played football. I wanted to play football. I never did because I was just like, nah, you know, fuck that. Like, you know, I don't want to be fucking feeling like I did that day, those those days, you know, back in the day, you know. And maybe it would have been different, you know what I mean? Maybe at this point my dad would have had time to fucking be there. But I was so fucking ignorant and just, you know childish that i was like nah i'm just not gonna fucking join the soccer team basketball team the football team nothing you know what i mean i never i never fucking did nothing because of that and um you know was, it, at the moment it was cool because i was like fuck it i'm i'm, I'm doing bigger things because <clears throat> i grew up in a family of uh crazy but i don't know if my you know, family might be hearing this, and I, you know, I'm sure they're not gonna be like whatever. They already know what's up. You know what I'm saying? But I grew up in a family of drug dealers. You know what I mean? My father was the only one that was. It was on my mother's side, but um, all my uncles from my mother's side were uh, big time drug dealers. You know, and I grew up seeing all of them uh, pulling up and fuck with fucking jewelry, with fucking brand new escalades with fucking sick ass rims like all the top of the line shit like you know what i'm saying this is your family member like this is your uncle you know what i mean like and i grew up with fucking i didn't look at what my father was doing because my father wasn't there you know what i'm saying so all i looked at was my uncle's pulling up with all this shit and my mind was like i want that these motherfuckers like you know look at this like they they look fucking you know they look they look fucking you know they're they're fucking wearing some sick ass shit sick ass jewelry you know what i mean they're driving some sick ass cars you know what i mean and my house in Sintown was the the hangout house you know in pomona it was the hangout house it was a house on the block where where fucking everybody would get together on saturday and fucking drink some fucking beer and do some coke you know what i'm saying that was the spot yeah so me i remember me and my little cousin uh, my, not my little cousin He's actually a little year, a year older than me But um, I remember me and my primo were Always fucking on the other side of the fence Because the garage was right here too. And uh, the garage was here And on this side was a fence But there was cars right here There was one car right here So we were underneath the car Just scoping out everything they were doing We were always watching everything they were doing Because that's what we do as kids You know what I mean We, we, we look at what they do and, and um, Thank you sir we look at what they do and, and we aspire to do what they do. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. That's what we do. So we were like, <clears throat> you know, we saw that, you know, they were always, uh, they were in the garage, right? That's all good, bro. And um, we saw that they were always uh, going into the back of the garage where the toolbox was at and they would always do something back there and, uh, you know, walk back to the front and they would take turns, you know, one by one. We didn't know what the fuck was going on at that point. You know what I mean? We were fucking maybe like 12 years old. That's, I don't know, maybe 11, 12. Check this out. We, Me and my primo were like, you know, we got to find out what the fuck they're doing. <laughs> so one day, on one of those days, on one occasion, they um, 
they all jumped in the fucking truck and uh, they took off to go get beer. So guess what we did? You and my primo jumped fucking quick and ran in the garage. Went to the back. My dad had a snap on toolbox. Never forget that shit. It was a red toolbox, tall, tall as fuck. And on the like one of the middle drawers, it was slightly open already. And I was like, <laughs> this is the one. <laughs> fucking <laughs> pull the drawer open. Guess what I found? There was a fucking mirror about the size of about, I would say about six inches by six inches. And uh, there was a side, there was a chunk of Coke. There was a big ass rock of Coke. And there was at least six lines lined up, just big ass lines. And uh, me and my primo were like, the fuck is this? Like, we didn't know, you know. We didn't do anything with it at that point, but we saw what the fuck they were doing. You yeah. know what I mean? We saw that that's what they were doing back then. That's what was making them happy. Yeah. Because they would go and they were, they would come back and they'll start singing. You know what I mean? They would you'll get pumped <laughs> up. And, and so we're like, this is what they use to make them feel good. Yeah. And so, <clears throat> um, yeah, we left it alone that day, right? We left. We saw what they had. Um, so when I was, uh, you know, like I said, I was I was looking up to all my uncles, right? They had all these fucking sick ass cars and stuff like that. Anyways, um, when I reached the age of fifteen, um, I remember going to a party, and uh, I'll never forget. In the garage, there was a party in the back, and there was a little small party going on inside the garage. Like there was something else separate, a little private fucking, you yeah. know, VIP type shit. <laughs> and my boy that I was with was close to the boy that was th my, the guy that was throwing the party. So you know, long story short, we fucking got in the garage. So in the garage was Just give me the bottle, though. Yeah, shoot that shit already. We ain't gotta be going back and forth. With yeah, go ahead, John. So in the garage was the big boys. Uh, Give me a shot glass too, yeah, please. In the garage was the big boys doing um cocaine. Yeah. You know, we were fucking like in, I was 15, I was maybe like ninth or 10th grade. I don't remember exactly, but I think it was ninth grade. It was closer to ninth grade, the end of ninth grade. But um, they were doing coke. Yeah. You know, they had this big ass light and the light was off but they, they had all the shit lined up right there and i remember i was there and i was like that's that shit <laughs> that's that shit i saw that's the shit they do yeah this is it and my boy was like you want to do one and i was like hell motherfucking yeah shoot that shit and like that's what my dad does that's that's what all my uncles do like you know I me mean? my padrino that's what we all do you know it's in the family so here i go do my first line 15 years old. You know, I'll never forget that shit because night. But anyways, um, I don't want to go there with this. But uh, long story short, fucking, I ended up doing all the coke that night right there, right, whatever. And um, I had money, you know, I always, always carried money. I was always a little hustler, so I always had some cash on me. So I came back to the homie and I said, hey, I need some stuff to go. Yeah. And he said, yeah, well, how much you need? And I was like, well, you know, I didn't know. I was like, how much you got? What, what is it so, you know? He's like, oh, I sold by eighths, you know? So you're an eighth. I was like, okay, what's up? how much is eighth? He's like, 180. And I was like, damn. Like, oh, that's a lot of money for me. You know what I mean? I was like, damn. Oh, yeah. All right, fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> I ended up buying this shit, dog. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because I had the, you know, like, I had the paper and I was just fucking, I was like, fuck it, whatever. So tell me why Monday I hit school. This was on a Saturday, right? Sunday I, I fucking was chilling really resting Monday I hit school and uh, I do a little bump before going to school and for some reason back then coke was different bro it's, I'm sorry to you know I don't want to make nobody fucking feel like oh shit like I make, make you want to use or whatnot but you're making then, me want to use like a motherfucker right I'm now, sorry that's not no, my intention go ahead bro Just, you know but um <clears throat> there's any coke in the house hold on me no. <laughs> no, 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 no. We made sure of that before we came in. We just I told him, anyways. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, um, no. Well, you know the cocaine was fucking, yeah. Bah, bro, we used to call it the Pink Panther, bro. The Pink Panther it was fucking pink. It had pink flakes, so it, you'd break it off and it was fucking oily as fuck. And and, and it, anyways, um, <laughs> it was bomb, bro. Uh, so I I took a hit before before going into school. So during first period, I was fucking pumped, lit. But I wasn't on one. It was just, I was focused. 
And I was like, damn, I like this. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I like how it feels. You know what I mean? I'm like, boom, boom. Focusing, like, teachers writing some shit. And I'm just like, all right, cool, 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 cool. You know? Yeah. And I was like, dude, this just helping me fucking learn. So, you know, I, I justified. I, I looked for a fucking reason. Yeah. You know, maybe that shit didn't help. Maybe I was just fucking tripping. Maybe I was, um, whatever it was. But I started fucking doing it, on, you know. Finished that eighth within a week. Went back, got another one. And uh, at this point, somehow, one of my, I don't want to say who, but one of my family members ended up finding out that I, what I was doing. Turns out that specific family member was the provider for everybody that hung out of my house. And um, real close family member. And um, he was like, hey, I see what you're doing. Like, I know you're doing something. Like, I see, you, you know. Yeah. Like, see how you're moving and shit. Yes. You know? Yeah. And, you know, the way I would act, the way I would dress. I started dressing with, like, fucking. It was crazy, bro. In ninth grade, I started dressing with fucking dressing pants, fucking dressing shoes, and a fucking. I was like mafia wanted like you know what I mean like I thought like you yeah, know what I mean like yeah. I wanted to wear like a fucking dressing shirt and I always had my fucking nice slacks and fucking dressing shoes <laughs> yeah and I had a fucking Louis Vuitton backpack dog ninth grade dog never forget that shit suede and you know I was fucking at that check it out but this this is the before this my 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 uh, relative ended up finding out that yeah I was doing that he goes yeah hey, so check it out I got that how much you getting it for. I told him what I was getting it for. He's like, I'll give you this much for this. And it was fucking way more. Yeah. So long story short, I ended up fucking starting to sell for that person, for that person, my, my yeah, that family member. I don't want to say because, you know, I know my family's going to be probably going to watch this and I don't want to say it because I don't want to, you know, anyways. Um, so I started selling and he had a shit. My cousin, he had a son. Um, and we were both, his, his son was already on game. So his son was fucking moving, like work, every week. He was a little bit older than me, and he was moving work. And I wanted to be like him. So started providing for me, started giving me all kinds of, I started bringing maybe like, you know, half, half a week. Started selling it in school. Another family member had an accident. And so uh, they gave, they were prescribed Vicodin. Fucking that family member was like, hey, I don't take this shit. It's too strong. It makes me want to throw up. You know, I know you hustle, you know, and I see you. You know, it was a female relative, and she said, you know, why don't you sell this for me? Make some money, you know? And I was like, shit, I'm down. What is this? She was like, it's strong painkillers, you know? So I ended up taking one. You know, that also changed my life, you know what I mean? Because I loved the way that shit made me feel. You know, I was fucking young and... You know, that shit, that shit just fucking makes you feel like just warm and just like, you know, it just makes you feel a certain way. And um, so I started selling Coke in school, started selling Vicodins. Somehow, another one of my cousins got me into selling meth as well. Um, you know, I'd buy about an eighth off of him and I would break it down and I would sell it like in dimes at school and. It's weird because back then kids were actually buying this shit. You know, I mean, I would sell fucking three or four dime bags in uh, in a uh, in lunch during lunch. You know what I'm saying? Then coke didn't move as much, but it did move. Kids would, you know, because the coke wasn't dubs. But um, yeah, so I was fucking 15 years old selling dope, selling coke, selling fucking pills. And I was already addicted to the pills because I liked the way they were. You know what I mean? I also started smoking weed at that point. You know what I mean? So I was, just, you know, straight fucking up. You know, I was, I was, I was going the wrong path. And, um, you know, I started gaining money. Um, I ended up getting with, um, you know, I was in ninth grade, right? So I ended up getting with the fools in the high school that were the hustlers. You know, there was actual cr click that was nothing but hustlers. You know, and I don't know if I could say it um, here, but, you know, it was just a little crew that, you know, they were all nothing but little hustlers. So I ended up joining that crew, you know what I mean? And uh, those are still my boys to this day, you know? I still have a lot of love for those fools, you know what I mean? Like, Sintown, you know what I mean? I'll be honest, it was Sintown, Sintown crew, you know what I mean? And, and, um, 
And so I was 15. So my dad used to rent out half the house, right? And um, he used to rent out half the house. And for whatever reason, those people that were renting got kicked out or whatever it was. Anyways, he was like, hey, you're big already. You're fucking 15. You know, I see you with girls and stuff. He's like, what's up? You want half the house? You want to you wanna get that piece? Like, you know? Yeah. It was crazy. I was like, fuck yeah. You know what I mean? I'd have my own. Pretty much it was divided in half. So I'd have my own house, my own room, my own living room, my own kitchen. It was sick, bro. Yeah. So tell me why that house ended up turning into a trap house. You know what I mean? It ended up turning, not a trap house exactly, but, um, you know, me and my crew members, we, ninth, 10th grade, you know, we were fucking meeting up there and, and breaking shit down. You know what I mean? The big, the you know, the big dog fucking, my big boy fucking guy who had to be fucking would pull up with, you know, fucking... I don't know, back then it was maybe like an ounce or whatnot and just fucking pull out baggies and, and scales and everybody would start fucking, we'd put music on and, and start fucking breaking shit down. Boom, 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 boom. And um, that's what it became, you know what I mean? Every Friday, Saturday, we'd break everything up and start fucking having everything ready for Monday to start selling. And um, throughout all this, fucking, there was always still fighting with my father, you know what I mean? Like there was always still issues, you know, there was always problems in the house. Um somewhere around you know somewhere around the age of 16 my father bought me um you know you know my father you know my father was um remember we were broke right he provided for two families so i want to bring you back to my father um buying the first house in 1998 right boom it's in town bought the first house you know it was it was right before y2k you know, um, I'll never forget that. You know, Y2K was around and everybody was always fucking scared because the computers were going to go down. There was some shit, you know. But um, 1999, my father started working at the shop that he owns now as a mechanic. And um, he was uh, he was just a mechanic there for, you know, 1999. And um, <clears throat> he worked there for about two years. And uh, the guy that owned the shop, Ended up telling my father, like, hey, I'm trying to retire. Like, I'm I'm trying to get out of here. Um, what's up? Do you want this place or what? And my father was like, great. You know, that's an opportunity, you know. And uh, he took the opportunity, bought the shop with a partner, which is where he fucked up. But he didn't have all the money. So my father, my father ended up getting um, an associate, you know, a partner. And um, shit, shit didn't go right. So... At the spot my father lived in, right, there was um, the guy that owned the ranch next door. Big ass fucking ranch. Uh, that was my father's uh, mentor. You know, he, he, I'll never forget. He, his name was Jesse Aguilar, you know. <clears throat> he used to um, he, he used to mentor my father. He used to tell my father, you know, how to go, how to do business, how to uh, do certain things, you know, how to carry himself. Because my father didn't, you know, had no absolute clue about how to be that way, you know. And this guy actually took my father under his wing and um, was teaching him a lot, you know, teaching him a lot of game, a lot of, of hustle, like, you know, those type of things. And, um, you know, it's crazy because when my father opened up the shop, my father did it without telling him, you know, my father went behind his back and did it. And then when his shit hit the fan and my dad told him, like, hey, I bought a shop, but I bought it with. You know, I couldn't didn't have all the money. I hadn't, I, gotta get, I hadn't get an associate. He started tripping. You know, he's like, why the fuck didn't you let me know first? You know, you should have told me I would have helped you. I would have been your associate. You know what I mean? Like, it never works like that. And uh, he ended up borrowing the money from him to get the associate out. So my father could be the single owner of the shop. And, uh, yeah, that was in uh, about 2001. He ended up, he established CR Automotive, Carlos Ramirez Automotive, you know, in Pomona. And uh, shit was hard. This was in 2001, right? So it was cool. Business was slow. I remember my dad picking me up from, uh, my dad would pick me up from uh, sixth grade, pick me up from sixth grade and uh, take me straight to the shop. We would go in, um, I had a little office and I would just fucking go into the office, you know. Here's another story. <coughs> One time. <coughs> and it was seventh grade. 
I I um I got picked up by my dad, right? And um he he took me to the shop. So I walk into the office. <coughs> there was a white cabinet. I'll never forget this cabinet. Check it out. I don't know. I kept seeing fools walking back there. The same thing as the shit in the garage. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So yeah. I kept seeing fools walk back there, you know, curiosity fucking, you know. So. Kills the cat. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> fucking murders that motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> and um, <clears throat> so I ended up going back there after everybody walked out. I ended up going back there and I opened the fucking cabinet. There's a fucking bag, right? Brown, brown paper bag. I'm like, what the fuck's in the bag? Open, because it was crumbled a little bit like that. Fuck, I'm open the bag. Boom, boom. I look inside. There's a fucking kilo of cocaine. Yeah. A whole kilo. <clears throat> a whole kilo. A little brick like this. And the top <coughs> was cut. And it had another split. It was cut in the next. And it was open. And you can see where they would, they had been fucking carving it to do, you know, what they were doing. Yeah. And I was like, what the fuck? This was inside my father's shop. You yeah. know? But but I, I, I it was because... He had the associate, and the associate was fucking doing dirty things, you know what I mean? Yeah. So they had a big ass, you know, they had some shit going on right there. Yeah. And um, so, you know, my ended, my dad ended up buying the fucking associate out and ended up keeping the shop to himself, you know. And uh, it was still difficult because uh, back in those days, there wasn't a lot of work. You know, my father had just started, so... It was slow for him, you know. He, he hadn't established his clientele yet. Mm-hmm. No, no, not at all whatsoever. The good thing is my father has always been, um, you know, a very respectful, caring, you know what I mean? He has a heart, you know what I mean? A lot of people don't have that. Mechanics you know, don't have that. My father has a heart. You know what I mean, he touches his heart. When you go to my father and you tell him, like, hey, you know, I got to get to work tomorrow and I need this car, but all I got is this much. I'm short this much. I'll get it to you Friday. My father's the type of person that'll be like, you know what? I'm gonna take your word for it. Go and just bring back, bring me the money Friday. You know, so my father's that type of person. You know, so that has helped him out a lot in business. That and the fact that he's fucking honest. My dad's not a fucking bullshitter. My dad's always been fucking. That's what I love about my dad. He taught me that. You know what I mean? Like, in order for you to succeed, you have to be fucking honest. Honest, and you have to do for the people, not for you. You have to care for them. So what we do, we do for them. You know, I mean, it also we benefit from it, obviously, but you have to do it for them <clears throat> to help them. You know what I mean? And and that's the way I carry myself nowadays too. You know what I mean? Like I love to help people, bro. I get a kick. I get a kick out of fucking fixing somebody's car, and knowing that that guy's gonna wake it to work tomorrow. You know what I mean? Thanks to fucking me fixing his shit. Yeah. You know, what I mean? that's the way I learned. And um, my father was that way, you know. And so he grew up. He grew quick. You know, he grew quick. <clears throat> He was growing up fast, right? So shit was going good. 2001, 2004, I started high school. You know what I mean? Um, you know, high school was fucking crazy for me because I was selling drugs, you know. Yeah, like you said. Like yeah. I was telling. And then fucking, I was doing stupid shit. You know what I mean? My dad bought me a fucking BMW. I'll never forget it. BMW 318 IS, uh, 1998, 1999. It wasn't fucking new back then, but it was fucking sick. And um, It's close enough. You know, it was fucking a nice whip, bro. And uh, I'll never forget, fucking 20 days later, I fucking wrecked that motherfucker, dog. I was going 120 westbound on the 10th freeway. Coming from Upland, from Upland, we were hanging out at one of my boy's spots. My dad had called me and he said, I need you at the shop right now. And, you know, I always blame my father for it. And that sucks because it was never my father's fault, you know what I mean? And uh, I was going about 120 miles per hour on the slow first lane like a dumbass. I was fucking... 16, 15 years old bro 16 years old i just got my fucking permit my dad sent me to school you know what i mean so i knew how to drive bro my dad sent me to school he paid for me to go to school you know to this day i utilize all that shit i don't forget it like i'm a good motherfucking driver when you see me drive like you know like oh this motherfucker drives good you know what i mean like you know i went to school and i utilize all the information i always got from that you know and um i was coming 120 and uh turns out i was passing Monta Vista, and on the on ramp on Monte Vista, not the off ramp when you pass the off ramp, but the on ramp. I was on the slow lane, and uh, I'll never forget it was a Chrysler PT Cruiser that was merging in. And I'm coming, mind you, I'm coming 120 miles per hour. Um, it was me, my boy, and uh, one of my other boys in the back seat. And um, 
as soon as we got close, you know, as soon as I got close to the car, I hit the brakes, stomped on them. I didn't know how to drive back then. You know, I mean, I was a fucking kid and uh, lost control of the vehicle. Vehicle started spinning, <sighs> ended up facing traffic. And I ended up facing traffic and I'll never forget. It was a fucking Nissan Xterra 2003 came straight at me. Boom. Hit me right in the corner. Boom. And then it fucking started swirling. Foo, 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 foo. Boom. Hit the fucking wall, the, the side wall. And uh, the crazy part is, as soon as we hit that fucking wall, about fucking one second later, we hear burp, a fucking truck, a trailer, and the fucking truck just passed. <sighs> and the car just fucking ra- like rocked. Yeah. One more fucking second, we would have fucking been dead, bro. Yeah. Dead, dead. You know what I'm saying? Like, it was just crazy. And uh, it's fucking crazy because I tried to get away still. You know what I mean? I tried to get off of Monta Vista and go south. Like, get off Monta Vista and start going that way. But the car was so fucked up. There was no fucking way I was going to do that shit. My boys were like, nah, just chill. Just chill. It's too late, you know? Yeah. But yeah, that was a fucking crazy ass experience. Um, my dad ended up having to pay for that fucking truck, like $30,000. Well, wow. You know what I mean? The insurance. They, he, I don't know if we didn't have insurance or what it was, but. He ended up having to fucking pay for that, you know. It's crazy, dude. Like, just the stupid shit I would do. It was just wild, bro. Um, So high school, right? I became a fucking sick-ass cokehead. Um, I was uh, kicking it with the fools that were, you know, we had respect. We should have respect in high school, you know what I mean? We, we we were the fucking shit in high school. Nobody fucked with us, you know what I'm saying? Like, we were fucking well-respected because we were nothing but hustlers and some of them were gangsters, you know what I mean? Some of them were with it, you know? We carried straps. We were always strapped, you know what I mean? High school, I'm like, what the fuck carrying a motherfucking strap? Like, stupid. You know, those times where we'd let it off when shit would pop off, but we were always, you know, we, we, we weren't stupid. We were smart about it, you know what I'm saying? We were always low-key type shit, you know what I mean? But everybody had respect for us. And, um, you know, I remember in high school, fucking, they used to sell these fucking little pizzas, right? They used to have this little stand. And um, they used to fucking bring out that stand in lunch, right? And there was, five, there was pizza, Domino's pizzas, actual Domino's little pizzas. They were about five to six bucks a piece. Well, me and our crew would fucking buy out that shit and just everybody would get some. You know what I mean? Like, we were just yeah. making money, just hustling, you know what I mean? And um, <clears throat> throughout all this, there was still issues at home. You know what I mean? There was still problems. Um, you know, shit at home was wild. Um, it started getting worse. My father was drinking more. Uh, father started going into depression somewhere around 2007, 2006. And uh, he started drinking a lot. And um, I remember we had to take him to hospitals. Why was, why was he going through depression? Um... He ended up um, getting that same lady pregnant again. Is it is it third child? That was her second child with him, with okay. my father. Yeah, which is my brother Felipe. Okay, he's uh he's twenty years old now. Yeah, so you know it was it was about you know um, yeah um. And so why why did that create depression from this the added stress of uh continuing I, to fuck up obviously and, the stress of like fuck we we have already been through this and now we're gonna do this shit again like, yeah fuck you know so yeah. he was started going into depression he started drinking a lot you know so in high school um my father was fucking he was tough on me he was fucking tough like you know and and growing up and so this is another thing that i wanted to put out on here because you know i want to talk about this because i know one of my sisters at least one of them is going to be listening to this maybe both but growing up you know what i mean like i want i want them to know that i love them regardless of anything but growing up <clears throat> i envied i envied them why did you envy them i envied them i had anger towards them why you know, i had a resentment because my father never raised his voice at them not once, bro. They're My girls. F- yes, and now I understand because I have daughters. Yeah. But but li- listen, I didn't know this, right? I was a kid, but I was scared. Like, I was mad, you know? And I love them to death today, but back then I used to ha- hate them, bro. Not hate, but just I used to be like, <laughs> yeah, bro, because they never got hit, bro. Yeah. They never got yelled at, you know? I was the motherfucker that got yelled at. I was the motherfucker that got beat, dog. 
And mind you, I haven't really gotten into that story, but my father was abusive to me and my mother. You know, and I don't want to make him look bad, but it's the fucking reality of addiction and what alcohol will do to you, you know? He fucking beat the shit out of me. He would always beat the shit out of me. He beat the shit out of my mom, you know? Never touched my sisters, though. So I always had that fucking resentment towards them. That fucking, why the fuck don't they get beat like me? Hmm. You know? Yeah. I didn't understand. It was crazy. <clears throat> but, you know, I love him to death regardless of everything. But, um. Just, you would like him to see him get beat too, though. Nah. <laughs> It's for the time. I'm just saying, bro. I just did it. You know what I mean? No. <laughs> I like to see him get beat. <laughs> You're a fucking Ew, dick. <laughs> In hindsight. No, fool. I just, I was jealous because I was like, they're not getting beat. Like, why the fuck? What am I doing? And I wasn't, I was a motherfucking knucklehead since yeah. a kid, dog. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. I was a straight, that's my little soul. Yeah. You know, I, was, I was the fucking black sheep, dog. My whole life, I've been the black sheep. You know, I'm sure a lot of people can relate. I was that motherfucker. I was that scapegoat, that motherfucker that, you know, this motherfucker did it. Yeah. Because I was always obviously I always did it. You know, I'm the only boy. My sisters wouldn't fucking up. So yeah, I was the motherfucker that was you know my dad my dad was rough on, you know. So it's wild, bro. But you know, growing up it was like that, you know, I used to fucking be like, you know, fuck them. Why don't I get? Why don't I get beat up? Why they don't get fucking hit? Why they don't get yelled at? You know what, bro? It just uh, honestly, it just uh, once again through this story, and if like if pops is the villain, no, I'm just saying if right if, but this villain we're talking about yes. <coughs> You still got to give this villain a lot of respect. Exactly. Which is why I don't want to say he's a villain. He's not a villain. But that's why I said if. He just, he just, he did his best to do what he had to do as far as. I mean, he was tough on you because you're the boy. <laughs> yes. But see, the girls, you know what I mean? Come on now. You know, I feel that though too. You know, I feel that. You know what I mean? Like, the, you know, they're girls, bro. But but I understand when, when, when they're, we, we have siblings and we're young and we're. We're naive and we don't really understand everything, we but don't. but we're we're, we're, we we're just we working 100 percent on our feelings, right? Right. Like right, right. And, and a lot of these, a lot of the goonies, no, not a lot of the goonies. Some of the people that watch this sometimes work on their feelings, and feelings will fucking lead you in the wrong direction, and and not give you a, a clear understanding, but a clear understanding. It's a it's a it's a conundrum, really. It's a conundrum of life. Why am I getting beat, but my sister's getting beat? Well, they're <laughs> girls. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, <laughs> what gives them the pass? Because now these girls want to grow dicks, you know? And now we got Trent. <laughs> I'm just oh, fucking. Fuck. <laughs> well, that took a fucking turn. So, fuck. All right, yeah. <laughs> Hold on, bro. Anyways. It's a different uh, podcast, bro. Yeah, I we'll leave that for a different. Uh, yeah, but um, <laughs> you would know, I just, I'm, I'm, I'm talking in the sense of equal rights. You know right, right, I mean? of course, of course. You now know. now it's different, of course. Yeah, yeah I hear what but, you're but saying. But I, I hear what you're saying as well, you know, um, in regards to, you know, having a certain resentment yep. of why I am getting this treatment and you're and not. They're not, yeah. So yeah, um, I was fucking rebellious in high school, you know, rebellious. I ended up fucking, uh, I started selling more and more coke to my, my relative, and uh, I started doing more and more coke as well as I was selling. So, you know, in 2008, when I was supposed to graduate from Ganesha High School, I fucking dropped. I didn't drop out, but I just didn't fucking make it. Is that a good high school? It was a fucking sick ass high school back then, bro. I loved it. I mean, I'm not. People might say it otherwise, but I had had a good experience, bro, because of the fucking people that I met and the relationships I made that I still have homies to this day that you know I'm sure they're out there listening right now. Shout out to Good Nation High School. Yeah, 
You know what I mean? Like I still have motherfuckers that I they're my they're my day ones. You know what I mean? These fools that I talk about from Sintown, these are my boys. You know what I mean? These are these are my fucking boys still to this day. You know what I mean? There's only a few. It wasn't a big crew. It was just a short, you know, group of people that really shared the same fucking hustle, fucking ambition. You know what I mean? Yeah. We wanted to fucking get out the hood. You know, and we all had relatives that were fucking drug dealers and fucking gang members. You know what I mean? My boy Eddie, you know, my boy Eddie B. I don't want to put him on blast like that, but spend time my boy. But, you know, he had fucking, his whole family was fucking from the hood in that area. You know what I'm saying? So he had good, you know, plugs and shit, you know, and he had respect. You know, he was the main fucking guy. You know what I mean? He taught me a lot of fucking different, uh, you know, hustle tactics and shit like that. You know what I mean? Like, you know, he was the main fucking guy that, you know, put us on game back then. We were little kids. We were just like, you know, and he was a little bit older. And he was like, this is what y'all going to do. You're going to chop this up. Y'all going to keep this. This, this you're going to sell to whatever for what this price. And fucking boo, 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 boo. And you all going to make this money. And, you know, he was a motherfucking hustler. To this day, that motherfucker's a business owner. Shout out my boy fucking Eddie Berto. Fucking elite fucking tree service. You know what I mean? He's fucking out there doing his own shit nowadays i mean I, I, I i'm proud of him like just like he says he's proud of me you know what i'm saying like he came from the same fucking lifestyle and, and and he fucking has his own business now you know what i mean he's fucking doing real good you know married has a kid and everything and uh but yeah you know so when it when it when did you 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 talked about or you we've talked about you being in all of these detoxes, all, all right. these rehabs. So we haven't gone there yet. Okay, go ahead. Just continue, <laughs> let's, let's speed it up. Is no, it, no, no. Where I'm not we saying that. Time? No, we're good on time. You okay. good on time? I'm good I'm on good time. I'm good on time, bro. I'm 100%, saying, brother. Take wanna, your time, brother. No, I'm just, it's taking a little bit to get there. No, it's all good. <clears throat> you can take whatever it takes to get there. Right, Rick? Yeah, exactly. Loki, I got to take a... Uh, let's take a quick break, and I'm going to pay some ads, and we'll be right back with okay. uh, the yeah, mechanic. Okay, let's do this right here. Uh, let's. I'm gonna pay some bills right here, guys, and then we're gonna take a quick break. We'll be right back. Um, I want to give a big shout out to my personal uh, private jeweler, D. Dot Leo, the jeweler. Dude's a G. He does all the hood stocks pendants. Ray got one on right now. Yeah, hey, got my daughter's stuff too. Yeah, daughter, your yeah. daughter's stuff too. Yeah, yeah. Leo hooked up all my daughters. Uh, each one of my daughters, all three of my daughters, he hit all their chains up. If you guys, fresh. yeah, if you guys like to get in contact with D. Leo the jeweler, go to Instagram at D. Leo the jeweler, and holler at him, and you get a fucking, uh, you gonna hook you up. Uh, prepare for blast off and embark on an international journey of self discovery and exploration like never before. Introducing the exclusive Rick and Morty international gummies, your passport to inner realms of unconsciousness and falling off the chair. Uh, you guys. Uh, you know what? There's certain there's certain gummies that are chocolates mushrooms that i take it but i've always i always kind of like on the podcast i'll be i'll be honest with you guys guys i'll be honest on the podcast i stay away from the rick and morty gummies on the podcast because <laughs> i know it's the real deal dog and not that the other shit ain't the real deal but the rick and morty gummies dog hit hard. They, yeah thank you rick they hit hard they hit, dog bro. And if you'd like to contact, get in contact with Rick and Morty Gummies, I want you to go to at Rick and Morty Gummies official. And uh, yeah, let me see that right there. Damn, it's empty, right? <laughs> get that shit out of here, bro. It's fucking empty, dog. If not, I'll take some right now because, uh, you know what? I'm a fucking... Once a drug addict, always a drug addict, dog. And if you put it in front of my face, dog, I'm a fucking monster, dog. Get that. Give a fuck, dog. I'm going to get it, dog. If it's bad eeks, if it's anything, dog. Not methamphetamine, not Ooh. fucking heroin. <laughs> I ain't fucking with none of that shit. But the, the, the shit that I know that I can still maintain, dog, like, I'm going to do it, dog. Like, I, I, like, God told me, like, Lux, do you. You know what I mean? And I was like, all right, God, but it's gotta Thank it's you. gonna consist of mushrooms and a, and just less some lightweight yeah, shit. And he was like, All right, bro, but I just yeah. that's cool. Like God told me, he said, That's cool, bro, but just stay on the path and keep on giving these dudes platforms and keep doing right, bro, and take care of your family. And if this is what helps you maintain, then you don't do what you do. And I was like, All right, God, I'll holler at you later, you know what I mean? And then you know, and then anyways, yeah, these these are text messages with me and God. But anyways, at Rick and Morty Gummies official, hey business. Says you need stickers to promote your brand. Well, here's our sticker plug. That's the Graphic Joe. Go to Graphic Joe on Instagram. I'll let the dude. Matter of fact, better yet than ever, Graphic Joe Dash Joe dot com. All right. Hey, 
Use hood stocks for the promo code. Fifty dollars off your order of hundred dollars or more. All right. Hey, and then my boy Lux tattoos. I love this boy. This my but my G from uh, Temple Street, dog. You know what I mean? West Side, dog. You know what I mean? Don't play with this shit. He he been doing a lot of my tattoos lately. Um, I'm about to get a tramp stamp that says Droops across my lower back, bro. Whoa. Because you know I love Droops, bro, and I just want to show him a certain amount of respect. So I think if you know if I if we have a good friendship over 30 years, you know what I mean? Then I, I should tattoo his name across my lower back, Why dog. Not? Why not? Why not, dog? Right. I mean, it's only right. you only live once, bro. It's only right. It's, yeah, Rick, is it only right? It's only right, bro. Yeah. Thank Droops. you, Lucky. You're yeah. I love Rick, dog. Rick, Rick is my G. Rick, honestly, dog, if anybody, and honestly, when we had our all the bullshit that was going on with this shit, canine drones, and then he started having me bug out, <laughs> I started getting paranoid, bro. I was really just like, fuck, why does Rick got to get dragged through this bullshit? Because Rick, exactly, bro. Rick, Rick was, me? yeah, Rick, me, bro? Rick was like 100% like an innocent bystander in this me, shit. Dog. And anyways, I was um, standing in the corner and got shot by a stray bullet, dog. Innocent bystanders. Yeah, sometimes it happens, bro. But I'll check it out. We'll be right back. And we're going to open the phone lines, too, guys. And you Let's know what? Go. Lucky, you weak. Shout out to fucking, hey, you know what, dog? Sometimes I'm weak, dog. I'm human, bro. Like and subscribe, dog. We're all weak. Yeah, you know we what, dog? Us. You know what, dog? We caught. Hey, you, you know what? You see it the way you call it. And I respect that, bro. I respect that, bro, because sometimes I'm fucking weak, dog, but sometimes I'm very fucking strong, dog. You know what I mean? And that's and that's just being a human, bro. Honestly, dog. Just no way outside. Hey, we outside, no bro. We outside, All dog. fades, baby. Outside. All day, every day, baby. But I'm just saying, like, dog, like, yeah, dog, I'm a lot of things, dog. I'm a lot of things. And and I will never I will never backpedal from any comment that will, is just calling it the way they see it, dog. That's real shit. Lucky you weak, yeah, homie. Fucking weak, dog. But sometimes I'm strong, bro. And sometimes I check myself from the weakness, dog, and I, and I raise up, dog. You know what I mean? But it's just life, dog. You know what I mean? But it, we'll be right back with the mechanic. All right, we're gonna take a quick break because I gotta take a leak. Shit just getting crazier and crazier, my G. The streets are undefeated. Not trying to promote violence, just saying protect your family. To anyone trespassing on one man's life, take note. The devil is alive and well, but so is God. Choose one. I stalk like a wolf. Pray I don't shoot. Muzzle on your face, I'm a problem for your ghost. I stalk like a wolf. Pray I don't shoot. Muzzle on your face, I'm a problem for your ghost. I've got a gun with me. Cause I'm ready for it all Mama told me I was gifted And I'm different from you all Yeah, pick the shells up Turn the hell up Forever undefeated, the streets will fail us Mom and pop screaming, God prepare us Sometimes water comes in sand God made the deal, I shook his hand like a man Lucky you my son, wipe the blood off those bands Father, Lord in heaven, I'm a mother to the brethren I'm a burden to the reverend Searching for significance, my spiritual endeavors Every day I'm tested, every day corrected My hands are in the air, God bulletproof, test me Resurrect my senses, those were never bored, Lord Take me to your chamber, teach me a ways out of love or with anger I feel disgusted as I hold up this musket People taking lives out of ignorance is busted They shooting up schools Father with felonies, I got everything to lose I stalk like a wolf, pray I don't shoot Muzzle on your face, I'm a problem for your ghost I stalk like a wolf, pray I don't shoot Muzzle on your face, I'm a problem for your ghost I've got a gun with me Cause I'm ready for it all Mama told me I was gifted And I'm different from you all Forgotten soldier, I'm just a victim of war It yeah. was the cans of Jack Mack that I ate on the yard It was the welfare lines I was the proud of weight off It was yeah. my little girl's neck wrapping umbilical cords I carry yeah. on, cause glory weighed on no man How I look blaming you for the commitment I lack You the type to keep a bitch after she fuck with your man They try and kill the homie cause she gave up the ass I walk in class, my style's elegant, I'm gangster If it's making you uncomfortable, well homie get your cash up Complaining in the answer, go and pull in some work You got designer on, I got blisters that hurt for what it's worth yeah. I don't hate on no man But I'ma kill a motherfucker If he taking a stand Not for the gang But for the children That he left with no dad Don't blame the devil Where we from Jesus died over a rap I stalk like a wolf Pray I don't shoot Muzzle on your face I'm a problem for your ghost I stalk like a wolf Pray I don't shoot Muzzle on your face I'm a problem for your ghost I've got a gun with me Cause I'm ready for it all Mama told me I was gifted 
different from you all The universe is infinite, so it has no center This life is a drop in the ocean of its lender Don't ever think, for instance, that you could be the devil Could say that it's facts, but the devil is in detail Sleep well while I stare with my heat held It's cop scared, it's like, baby, he right there I'd do anything for my youth, I'd die now Picture what I do for my family, pop, pop Real soldiers carry weight, they don't drown Bipolar, the streets cold, they hot now Yet you wanna take my guns and leave me assed out See, there's a couple of these rules that I can't allow Cancel culture, got them thinking they could bust rounds yeah, That's why these fools acting pussy need a beat down Let me show them how the streets run when homies loud And give me all they fucking necks so I can ring them I out I stomp like a wolf, pray I don't shoot Muzzle on your face, I'm Apollo for your ghost I stomp like a wolf, pray I don't shoot Muzzle on your face, I'm a problem for your ghost I've got a gun with me Cause I'm ready for it all Mama told me I was gifted And I'm different from you all Yeah, baby. Oh, it's about to get better now. No, we just out of the bathroom, though. Hey, baby, hold on real quick. We, we hold on. Relax, guys. Don't get too. Uh, don't get your chonies in a bunch. Real quick, real quick. We're trying to figure out a couple things right here in the background. We're trying to. Uh, we got a fucking. Uh, oh shit. Oh, 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 baby. Like, subscribe, all that good shit. Hook stocks, baby, on a motherfucking Sunday evening. Don't play with this I'll shit, dog. Make your face. Yeah, Take it away, baby. It's uh, it was raining on Saturday and I was snowing, dog. Spence out, homie. Uh, <laughs> Typewriter. <laughs> no, I'm just fucking with you guys. Um, just got a little cold, man. I've been working on the sickness uh, for a minute. Mondo, you good, bro? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I have to take a um, huh? I have to take a call. Oh yeah, absolutely. <sighs> so. Uh, where, where, where? You know what these stories right here, bro, are the stories that, like I said, I don't know if I said live or if I said in the background, but this is how we started Hoodstocks. Uh, is it? With these stories, bro. Really? Like, in, what do you mean? Just like, uh, 
regular stories, yeah. raw yeah. stories. Yeah, they were they were raw, they were intimate, and they were real. Intimate, so, intimate. Yeah, yeah. this is this is this is like a this is like a candlelight dinner of a story almost. You know what I mean, like it's just one on one, bro. And I love these things. I love this right here. This is the style that we do. And I know the the the, the views are down, guys, but it's okay. You know what I mean? It's okay because honestly. If, if, if I'm happy with the quality that we're putting forward, and sometimes, fire, I'll see, it's Spinal, Spinal, Spinal been talking shit to me, dog. 361 viewers, that's, that's, that's not too much. Still, Still need to more. elevate, Lucky, yeah, and we'll, 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 but not boring, thank you guys. You know what, you know what it is? No, it's not boring, dog, because this is a real life story that a lot of people, very unprofessional fool on his phone, Oh, no, you guys got to understand that he's got timestamps, dog. He's, yeah. he's going through uh, uh, what you would do if you were trying to get somewhere. You know, you have uh, maps, bro. You have a... Uh, uh, no. I'm, anyway. not, I'm not just on the phone to be doing fucking disrespecting or anything. I'm just... Yeah, you know, you're just good, making sure I go through what you know what I mean. Because I I get nervous and I'm I'll get all over the place and so I just kind of want to make sure I have like I'm on point. You know what I mean? Kind of like on. And I asked and I asked him to do that as well. Yeah, as well, yes. This is Carlos right here. Yes, he's sir. out of Pomona and he's a mechanic, bro. And you know what? We don't need all. Sometimes we have gangsters here, and we sometimes we have dudes that are raised up with the gangsters that we're doing gangster shit, but they necessarily. Yes, sir. Change the fucking setup, Lucky. Bigger table, Joe Rogan. Don't say be real style. Just say Joe Rogan, dog. Because we do way bigger numbers than be real does, dog. You know what I mean? Even the dude's a legend, and I've been on his <clears throat> podcast. But um, anyways, let's get back into this story with Carlos. Um, this journey, right? Life journeys. There, you know, dog. This is. These are what I love, bro. This is what I love, dog. And what I, if what I love doesn't make sense to you, dog, then you know what, dog? I love you if you gotta say goodbye, bro. You know what I mean? But you won't be gone for too long, bro. You know? Rated R. Who gives a fuck what people think? Do what you do. Thank you. And Rated R, that's Conyo right there. Conyo's been with me since day one, bro. Sorry about the break, uh, LA nonstop. Let's get back into your story, brother. So check it out. I was in the part where the, uh, <clears throat> I was in the part where my father was going into depression because uh, he had that uh, that other boy. You know, he had that girl pregnant once again, and uh, he had another boy. So, you know, shit was just wild again, and uh, he was drinking a lot. He was. Uh, you know, using a lot of cocaine, and uh, you know he was very abusive. You know, but here's a fucked up part, Lucky. That at this point, my father had a mentor. I didn't fucking know this. Like, I I wish you know. Now I know what the fucking value of having a mentor today is because you know I have somebody right now that kind of mentors me. You know, and it's fucking awesome, right? But my father had a mentor. So check this out, Lucky. My father, when I was in about ninth, 10th grade, would come home and say, here's this book. You know, some fucking sick ass advanced book that had nothing to do with the fucking age I was in. And my father would say, hey, I want you to read this book at least three pages. And uh, I remember he bought me a typewriter specifically for this, a typewriter, old school you know yeah <laughs> and uh he bought me a little typewriter right and uh this was before computers and uh he said i want you to fucking read this book if you as far as you can and i want you to digest it he didn't tell me he wouldn't tell me that way that's the thing is my father always had a different way of talking to me because the way he was raised he was hard on me you know i'm telling you how i wish he would have told me he would tell me like aquí está este pinche libro léelo y like he wouldn't tell it to me in, in in a way that I think you know was the proper way so I would take it the wrong way you know what I mean and uh, so he'd give me some sick ass books well I never fucking read them you know I was a fucking knucklehead and uh, you know he'd get back home 
And he'd be like, where's that fucking paper? And there, there was no fucking paper. You know, I'd fucking type some stupid shit on it, you know, on a typewriter. And I would fucking end up doing some other dumb shit outside. Because I was rebellious. Because I had hate towards him. Because of everything he had done before, previous to this. And still did at certain points, you know. And I'd fuck up. So guess what? When he got home and I didn't have that shit, he'd fucking beat the shit out of me, you know. And I don't want to make him look bad or anything like that, but that's just the reality of the old school way, you know. Fucking whip the shit out of this motherfucker until he fucking learns his lesson. And um, that made me more angry, you know. It made me more fucking angry. Like, fuck this. I'm not going to fucking do what you're telling me. So I was more fucking rebellious. And, uh, you know, throughout high school, I fucking did what I wanted. You know what I mean? I, he gave me the half the fucking house. I was doing all that stupid shit. And uh, I'll put you like this. Uh, I didn't graduate Ganesha High School. You know, I didn't walk with my people. It was fucking depressing. It was sad, you know, because I was so fucking close. But it was just so fucking stupid because it was like the last half of the of, of my senior year. I fucked up, you know. Um, I ended up fucking during high school I ended up fucking uh, not dropping out but I just I just didn't give a fuck about school after after my senior year Yeah. so at some point in between all this my father wanted to move out of Sintown he wanted to move into Las Vegas hmm. and, and he wanted to uh, pull me out and I got more crazy like more rebellious because I was like this is where my friends are this is my homies like this is my people and um, instead of showing him that it was a good thing to stay there, I fucking proved them otherwise. I fucking was ditching. You know, I, I remember at one point they called my parents into Ganesha High School in the office and, uh, and they told them, um, you know, we're concerned for your son. And they're like, why? Because he's missed fucking 65 days out of fucking the year, you know? And then my parents were like, what the fuck do you mean? Like, he's, we drop him off in the front. They're like, well, he doesn't fucking make it inside. Yeah. And I would fucking ditch, you know. Where'd you go? Uh, back then there was like a lot of party crews and shit like that. So fucking. Yeah. You know, we would go and fucking hang out with, you know, party crews and go and party out, you know, shit like that. Um, I ended up meeting a guy in 10th grade. 10th grade, I'll never forget. This is my boy right here. I don't know how he's been. I hope he's doing good. I haven't seen him in years. But Joshua, Joshua Becerra. And, uh, you know, he was the son of, uh, like, a big-time drug dealer in Mexico. So when I met him, I, my life changed as well. Like, it, it, you know, it fucking spiraled. Like, you know, I went from fucking being the little hustler I was to now being a bodyguard to this fool. Okay. Because, you know, the way I carried myself, the way, you know, I fucking, you know, I carried myself like a G. Like, I was just fucking, you know, I was with the business. And, uh, you know, I was always strapped up. And this fool had just gotten to U.S. from Mexico. And he didn't know, you know, he was from U.S., but he was mostly always in Mexico. But now he had gotten to U.S. and he didn't know nobody. So he needed, you know, he needed people out here to, like, you know, take care of him and show him what's up. Yeah. So me and my little crew fucking kind of took him in. And, uh, you know, this motherfucker came in to fucking, uh, I remember sophomore year. He had a 2007, 2008 Chevy HHR, uh, which was like a, a weird ass, like a, they'd only made it like for a couple of years. It was like this weird ass truck, like car slash truck looking fucking car. It was expensive as fuck regardless. And uh, he had a sick ass sound system. And, uh, you know, he'd pull up to fucking school with that shit bumping, like sick with it, you know, corridos and shit like that. And so I was like, damn, this was cool as fuck, you know, like, damn, that's dope. You know, and then then other days, had mama pull up, pull up, pull up in a fucking brand new fucking Porsche 911, fucking GTR, GTS, uh, like a fucking sick ass Porsche. I remember back then it was like at least one hundred thirty thousand dollar Porsche. Talking about a 911, like, you know, sick. Like, his dad was a a big time guy, and so they had businesses out here. They had a um, a lot of property, um, so they had money. And they were new. He was looking for friends. 
So I ended up clicking up with this guy, you know? And uh, shit, my life changed, you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, all the shit that I always wanted, like as far as fucking having money and, and clothes and this and that, like it started becoming real, you know, clubbing, fucking VIP type shit, you know what I mean? Like, we were hanging out in clubs with like fucking big time fucking grupos, fucking, you know, shit like that. How, how was it hanging out at clubs with the big time grupo? <sighs> bro, it, it was like a fucking movie, bro. I, I've met a lot of artists, you know what I mean? In those days, and I was a little kid, bro. I was a little kid. Uh, I, made, I met Tari Castro. I met Larry Hernandez. Uh, I met uh, the, the Grupo no, Los No Rebeldes, like the real big group in Mexico, you know what I'm saying? Um, there was another group that was real big that we met. I don't remember the name of it. It was just a lot of different famous uh, artists that I met through him because they respected his father. They, uh, His father was like a big time fucking person. So anyways, I was, you know, I loved the lifestyle. Yeah. So this motherfucker started fucking, hey, what size shoes are you? This size. Oh, here's some fucking Gucci shoes. Here's some Louis Vuitton shoes. You know, I was like, this is what I've always wanted. You know, this is the type of shit my fucking uncles wear, the type of shit that, you know? Yeah. Big boys wear, the fucking big hustlers wear. And so, you know, he was like, yeah, I just need you to take care of me because I'm in high school. He's like, I'm younger than you. He was a year younger than me, but this motherfucker was big. Like, he was a tall motherfucker. And, um... You know, he was like, I need somebody to watch my back, you know, and, and uh, I'll tell you this, that uh, they used to call me Scary Man back then in those in that little clique, right? So he's like, well, I don't know, I've heard about you. He's like, so, you know, I want you to, uh, uh, you know, have my back, you know? And I, was, I had another boy with me, you know, um, my boy Ernie, and uh, he was, uh, you know, he was with the business as well. And so I told him, like, hey, if it's me, it's got to be him, too. You know, it's not just me. It's both of us. And he was like, yeah, yeah, fuck it, fuck it. So we started ended up being his little fucking bodyguards. We are like, fucking 15, 16 years old, bro. But we were really watching this fool. Yeah. Like, everywhere we would go, we'd have fucking, uh, at least at the minimum, 12-gauge shotgun in the truck and two two Glocks on us. One, one, one in one. Four, yeah. 40 Glocks. And um, never got to use them because everything was always okay. But this, I always wanted that. <clears throat> like, I, I really, it was stupid, bro. It was like fucking, I wanted to live a lifestyle that, like, you know, cartel type shit. Yeah. And his father was that. Yeah. So I was like, if I get with him, I meet people, eventually I'll fucking get into that, you know. Yeah. And um, and you, and I did. I met a lot of different people. I, uh we hung around a lot of different fucking drug dealers about uh, like big time foods that you know at the time i didn't fucking know and nowadays it's like damn i was i was with those foods in the fucking club when i was like 15 16 years old you know what i'm saying like in the vip section bro like yeah. popping bottles my boy had unlimited um my boy had unlimited whatever the fuck he wanted he, you know what i mean he had fucking, he would get it you know what i'm saying he was always fucking they, he had an open fucking bar everywhere he would go. So it was wild, you know. Um, his, uh, in high school, I remember his mom would always, um, she was cool as fuck. She was a cool as, as lady. And uh, they had brand new, two brand new Suburbans uh, back then. And like brand new from, you know. Zero miles type shit, like sick ass, murdered out, all blacked out. Like they just looked like some mafia type shit, you know? And, um, you know, we would use those trucks and fucking be going everywhere and people would fucking, you know, we thought we were cool. It just, it was, it was just like, it was fucking dope because, mom, we're fucking 15, 16 years old rolling in these fucking brand new trucks with fucking 12 gauge shotguns, um, you know, fucking guns and shit. And, up to no good, you know what I mean? Not really, we, we weren't we weren't looking for trouble, but, you know, we weren't fucking, we weren't going to back down either. So it was just wild, you know? And, um, you know, it's crazy about, while well, you're, you're sharing your story right here, I know you don't know, uh, I'm, I don't know if you're familiar with, uh, 
with the homie right here, Droops. Droops. This, this is my homie. Yeah, from, yeah, this is my homie from my hood right here. Droops. Yeah, he just got out uh, from the feds. Uh, long ass stretch. Thank you. And uh, all the game that you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. Is the game that he's been in. Right, right, right. And all on every single level you can possibly think of. Okay. This dude has been in. And uh Yeah, how do you feel, Rick, when you hear the story his his story, bro? I mean, a lot of the shit just seems like 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 kind of regular fool, like the shit that we were doing, fool. Like I hear him say it and I know people in the chat are probably like Oh, he's lying. There's no way and shit like that. But the whole thing is, is, I mean, when you're doing it and when it's live and that's the shit that you're on, I mean, you don't even feel like it's like that until you later and you think about it and you see what's going on and you're like, damn, I was in these positions and it could have went bad or... You know, I was with these dudes, and they're, you know, big-time dudes. And, like, even me, like, I was feeling like, how the fuck the feds come and get me? Like, I'm just a little dude right here trying to get it, you know? But, like, talking to people in jail, they're like, hell no, fool, you were doing it. You were big. Like, that's, you know, big-time shit. So, I mean... You know, a lot of people, it's it's hard for people to, like, listen to some of this stuff and relate. But, like, I'm sitting here and I'm listening to him. And I can relate to a lot of the stuff that he's talking about. Because it's shit that I was easily doing, dog. It was stuff that I was living and, you know, things like that, bro. So, it's just a different... Um, it's a different angle, yeah, because there's sure. levels. Yeah, for sure. There's a lot of different levels. Like, some people, you know, they come in on 10s and 20s and nickels and dimes and, you know, doing their thing, dog. So, like, once you start moving up to, like, pounds and kilos and, like, you know, 20s and 50s and hundreds of pounds at a time. I mean, I mean, bro. would you, Rick, would you say, I mean, so... And I said this a couple of times. This is the, the how Hoodstock started, just with these these type of stories. Yeah. Um. And it, it, so to maybe to Rick, he might be like, "You understand it," and you're just like, "All right, bro." I've had times where I was at my pad chilling. You know, I I called Dish Network and I wanted to put Dish Network in every room, so. I call them and they say, hey, we're going to be there tomorrow at 8 in the morning. You know, I'm still asleep, dog. So they come and the dude sees me. He sees I'm young and he's like, hey, bro, like, like, I want to talk to the owner. Like, who are you? And I'm like, bro, I'm the owner. Like, what the fuck you want? You know, he's like, oh, I'm here from Dish Network. And no bullshit, as we start talking, he's like, well, what do you do? I'm like, well, fuck, what the fuck you think I do, dick? You see my pad? You see what I'm doing? <laughs> like, what can I be doing? Do you think I'm a lawyer or some shit? <laughs> and he's like, oh, shit. Well, look, what's up, bro? I'm trying to get some work. And I end up selling the fool seven pounds and buying the fucking... Navigator from him that day. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, like... Rick has absolutely no paranoia. I mean, the shit happens. I mean, I've already went to jail for it. So, like, what the fuck are no, you I mean, No, I mean, even in that time, you've always been so fucking, like, carefree. Would, would that be the Well, the I mean, phrase? you remember, Dick. I no, and I remember, wearing, like, bro. Fucking drug dealer on the shirt and all this fucking weird shit. But... It was at a different time. So, like, we weren't really, like, is is hip to the, the shit it is nowadays. Like, it was, it was, like, flossing at a different level, dog. Like, just being like, like, yeah, I got it, and so what? Like, what are you going to do? Like, I don't got it on me, so what the fuck are you going to do? <laughs> Type Levels. shit, you know? Like, I wasn't selling the shit. I was... 
telling fools to go do the shit, but I wasn't doing it. So it was like, I was already past that. I already moved up, bro. So, you know, like when fools came through for that shit, it was just cool. You know? Absolutely. And it's good to have an expert on the panel right here. And that's, ah, expert. <laughs> <laughs> you are an expert, bro. You when if you you know, check it out, bro. If you like to think it or not, bro, you are an expert in this category because you've been through that, you've done that, you did what Easy. 16, 17 years in the feds? I did sixteen in the feds. He's just five out from in the, the feds, six in the feds, five Whoa. in the state. But that's anyways, crazy. thank you, Rick. Yeah, you know what no I mean? Problem, and that's bro. what you, you know, we got know. we got hey, homie. Uh, shit, I love to be able to have my boy Rick right here, and this is what we're gonna be doing doing right here it's me and rick right here now guys you know what i mean moving forward with hood stocks it's me and rick you know what i mean it's me and rick and and rick is a i think rick has become a professional with this podcast shit bro because he knows how to get in and get out and you know what i mean and and i ah dog you know what i mean a uh, rick it's me and rick from here on out with hood stocks baby and i just want to just stamp that confirm that and all that other good shit you know what i mean because i mean i can't be losing rick to the hater world bro <laughs> what the fuck bro uh, hater world's the homie though yeah you shout, already to, know. shout, shout out to the out. hater world shout bro out. um Moving forward, what were you asking? Right now, go ahead, ask me a, a lot. Oh no, no, your you time? No, I'm, I was just seeing the time. It was two hours. Yeah, I just see a lot of comments about people talking about I'm putting you to sleep. So I'm like, no, no. don't pay attention to the comments, bro. Okay, because they talk a lot of shit to the me too, bro. Comments are shit on you all day, bro. Yeah, okay, shit okay, on yeah. Because I'm yeah. seeing this shit everybody. and I'm like, no, I, we 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 encourage that, but you know what? That's don't what ever, they do, dog. Hundred percent, Rick. Let them know what they hey, do. Hey, look, dude. dog. All day, them comments will be like, oh, Droopy's a bitch fuck that fool i'll beat his ass all that shit until they like, see the dude in there, you know? you know? like, yeah. like i ain't I'm never like, got oh, beat yeah, up we... ain't nobody never did <laughs> yeah. me shit i'm everywhere i just came from a function in downtown ain't nobody do shit but shake my hand and give me hugs yeah so yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm looking at these fucking is. comments. And Don't I'm worry like, about the comments, bro. These so, motherfuckers are cold. Yeah, yeah it's a cold do. world, baby. It's a cold world. Uh, but oh, moving, baby. moving yeah. forward, yeah, with, let's, with your story, yeah, brother. Let's speed it up a little. No, bit. let's not speed it up. I want you to, to tell it thoroughly, brother, because I am thoroughly enjoying this. It doesn't matter what the comments feel. It's honestly, it's what we feel in the house. Me, Rick, and Mondo is in the casa right now. Usually, my cousin Nick is right there, but it's my auntie's birthday. Auntie Delia, I love you, and I'll, I'll talk to you later. You know what I mean? But Salute. happy birthday, happy birthday, yeah. Auntie. You know what I mean? Uh, Nick's over there right now with my cousin PJ and just the whole fam bam. But anyways, moving forward. But no, this is a great story, bro. And this is this is a story it's, where it's, a lot of people relate to. It's bro. a reality, it's, it, it, bro. It's my this, story. Don't don't let those comments fuck yeah. with you, bro. This I, honestly, dog, I this. From the past couple podcasts we've had, where we were just getting faded, talking shit, this, that, and the other, canine, and the, you know, all that, you know, what I mean, happy canines home, and talking about county jail, but this is right here gets back to the foundation of hood stocks, if you like it or not, you know, what I mean, what we do, dog. This, this, this is, is what we, this is what we do right here, bro, uh, right. homie, check it out, dog. Don't ever, don't ever devalue. Uh, don't let these comments uh, discourage you from never doing what you're doing right here because what you're doing right here is fucking beautiful it's art it's great and and you, the way you're be able to you're able to articulate it dog is next level and it's going to get you a, a lot of pussy tonight bro you know what i mean <laughs> i don't know from where you know what i mean <laughs> i mean mondo might open his legs and there might be a big ass bush right there you know what i mean <laughs> all right not that mondo anyways Fuck you, Lucky. This, yeah, this is no, uh, bro. I, Rick, uh, Rick. You know what? It might be. It might be. It, it, you know, check it out, Don. It might be slow for some of you guys, but honestly, digest it. Sometimes you gotta just breathe, chill, smoke some weed, bro, and hear this story, and you'll hear it on a different level, bro. You know, I mean, these are stories are important, bro. And Hoodstocks is the only podcast that will provide you these stories. So cherish it while we're here, bro, because we may not be here forever, bro. And it's your story, dog. Yeah, and this is a great story. And this is coming from a great man with a great family. His pops, as much as we, you know, his his downfalls, this and that, I know his pops, bro. His pops, <sighs> All business I've done with him has been fucking solid business, bro. You know what I mean? His sister, his mom, I know. You know what I mean? 
and 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 it's worthy, dude. It's worthy on so many different levels, bro. You know, I mean, this dude right here, <laughs> solid as they come. Not everybody's got to be have the gangster story of doing life in prison. No, this this is important, bro. You guys, chill out, relax, have yourself a drink. Light one up and enjoy this, bro. Eat some because Rick and Morty's. We don't always do this, so enjoy this right now. This is Sunday night. It's raining outside. If you're in the city, enjoy this. This is a good story, which can be a movie. Real shit. I just got a message, dog, from a homie. He's like, fuck the chest. You guys are doing great, you know? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Homie died, nah. I'm just I'm just looking at this show. I'm like, God damn, yeah, this was a show. Nah, that's what they do all the time. <laughs> this was boring as fuck. Let me let me Bro, just let me listen, just read this shit so people can know what I'm talking about. Like, this shit's shit. boring as fuck. He put Lucky to sleep. This nigga nah. work on mini bikes. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's what they hey, do. But hey, look, now, you know what you did now? He said he's gay. You made them, you made them get on you now, dog. Like, because hey, now they you see clout, that, you clout, you clout, and that's I'm it. Like, They're like, oh, that, you what, pointing me out. What did I do now to you guys, go crazy, bro? Like, dog. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm just up here fucking telling my story. Like this. That's is just, all you're supposed to do, dog, yeah. is tell your point of view of you your story. Just trying to look cool. I'm not trying to look cool. Like None of this shit is making me look cool. This was all embarrassing shit you know what i mean growing up they don't get it though bro well, and a lot of these fools if you look into their shit tap on she said do you like men it'll be like zero followers Motherfucker, if zero i told you this. how many baby mamas i have you'd be they're like they're all fake accounts bro how many they're kids fake i have accounts talking shit anyways you know? let's anyways. do this let's do this anyways check it out bro it's me and you right here it's yes, me sir. you yes, sir. and droops bro yes sir my right hand man droops and I'm so blessed to have a right hand man stronger than my right hand. You feel what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. We we talk about having a right hand. I, I, I you know what, guys? I just want to let you guys know, and I want to let Droop know, dog. We gonna work this out. We gonna make it right. We gonna. We here. We here. It's gonna we make good. sense, Rick. We here. It's making you, baby. sense. We here, yeah, bro. Exactly. You know we're what I mean? Here. Back to All right, your so, story. <clears throat> so we were around the uh, part where uh, my father was into depression, right? So uh, to go into that in 2008 was the fucking uh, the uh, economy collapse, right? Yeah. The economy collapsed. That was huge, bro. It was huge, right? Yeah. Uh, so it turns out uh, my father lost his house in Sintown that we owned, you know? You, you know what's fucking crazy is that, you know, my father bought that house for about $90,000 fucking stupid cheap you know? wow ninety thousand dollars 98 99 and uh i don't know exactly how much he owed on it when the show oh you know what happened is uh he um he that's right danny thank you um it's the he um he fucking lost the house bro so he you know a lot of people lost their house during that Nine, time, bro. Yeah, bro. And so that shit. Gentrification hit. happened in my neighborhood, bro. That shit hit my father hard, bro. <clears throat> hard. Yeah. And it hit the whole family hard, bro, because. For being a provider. Yes. You know what I mean? Like, we didn't have nowhere to live. We got kicked out of the fucking house. You know, my father was fucking drinking for days, days, and days. And I remember being as a fucking kid at that point. I don't remember exactly what the age, but. We'd have to take him to the fucking hospital so he could fucking detox from the alcohol because we couldn't we couldn't get him off of it, you know. Yeah. Because he was so fucking depressed, he was so sad. You know, what I mean, everything that he had worked so hard for. So it turns out my father, uh, before the market crashed, just like everybody else, refinanced the house to put money into it. Okay. Uh, you know, he did the roof. He fucking did all kinds of shit to it. And uh, he financed. It. Oh, he financed it also to get money to invest into his shop. You know, CR Automotive. You know, he financed it to put some money into the shop as well. So when the market crashed, fucking lost it, right? So, you know, he fucking lost his mind. He was fucking. You know, I remember uh, we were living in the fucking shop because we had nowhere else to fucking live. And uh, you know, I remember fucking going to school and you know leaving from a fucking shop like you know that's fucking crazy like not having a house you know 
And uh, it was difficult, you know what I mean? At first, it was just so fucking crazy, you know, because I didn't fucking understand, like, fuck, you know. And, uh, you know, my father continued drinking, but we still had the shop, you know. The, the shop was what, what the, honestly, that business is what has been the backbone. Like, no matter what, it's always kept us above water, you know. But because if it wasn't for that business, uh, we would have been on the streets, you know, at least we we had we slept in a fucking shop. But at least you know that that shop when it opened it made it made money. You know what I mean? There was business there, so you know we were able to generate money. So my father ended up. Uh, we rented a house real quick. We didn't last too long there, living there. But we were living there for I don't know a couple of weeks maybe. You know, until pops uh, made another move. So he fucking got some money together and we moved into a house. Nice. In Pomona on the north side. You know. And uh, it was a small house, but it was it was decent, you know. It was cool. And, uh, you know, that's uh, somewhere along the lines there. That's when uh, I started really going into hard, hardcore into drugs. Um, so, remember, I, was, I, started, I started doing cocaine when I was 15, right? It was a norm. It was a weekend thing, right? Um, so, was smoking weed, drinking. And uh, when I got out of high school... Um, I was uh, introduced by a guy that fooled me, fooled me, did me dirty. Uh, I was introduced into crack, crack cocaine. Um, I'll never forget that day. I was sitting in his truck. He had pulled up to my house, and he was a cool guy, like, you know, in, in school. So I remember he pulled up, you know, he pulled up to the pad, and he said, hey, come outside, fool. So he called me, right? And I was like, yeah, I'll come out. Got in his truck with him, and he's like, hey, fool, we're going to fucking smoke this weed with me. So I'm like, yeah, fuck it. You know, it's cool. That's what we, you know, we smoke weed. But I remember it was in a fucking pipe, and it was a straight pipe. And I told him, I was like, what kind of fucking pipe is that? Like, I've never seen that. He's like, oh, fool, don't trip. This is just a, a, a pipe that I bought at the liquor store, you know? Yeah. It was a straight shooter. And, um, you know, I didn't fucking pay attention, but he let me take the first rip. And there was weed, but at the top of the weed, there was a fucking big ass fucking, you know, rock of crack. And, um, you know, he told me, like, take a sick ass rip, fool. Like, take that shit, you know? So I fucking ripped it. Oh, fucking burned the shit out of it. And, um, you know, that's another thing that changed my life. Fucking, you know, it, it fucking gave me a sick ass rush. Uh, you know, my fucking ears started fucking, whoa, whoa. like everything was just fucking crazy. Like the high was intense. And uh, what his intentions were to get me high off that shit so that I would want more because he knew I had money. You know what I mean? He knew I came from a family at that point where we were okay, you know? And so he tricked me into that shit. And I'll never forget that whole night we fucking kept going back and forth buying that shit. And, um, Smoking it, you know what I mean? At one point, this motherfucker pulled the radio out. <laughs> it's crazy. We were, we were, you know, I was driving, I was driving a Porsche. I had a Porsche 924 S87 back then. And um, I had a fucking Alpine stereo in it. So somewhere around four in the morning, we had ran out of shit to fucking cluck or money. You know, we, had, we didn't have money and we started clucking shit. And this motherfucker pulls the radio out and he goes, hey. We're just going to get a dub sack on it. Don't trip tomorrow. We'll get the dub and then we'll get the radio back. And I was like, fuck it. You know, I was fucked up. So I was like, yeah, 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 yeah. Go, go, go. So yeah, he did that shit. I never got the fucking radio back, but that's the type of shit that that, sh that drug will do to you. I might, yeah. My respects for that shit, dog. Like, <laughs> yeah. That motherfucker will make you sell your fucking underwear to fucking get high, bro. Like. It's just intense, bro. It's crazy. I, I, I was stuck on that shit for several years. Um, you know, I would fucking get high off that shit and be in my mom's garage. And um, I had a fucking shotgun back then. And, uh, you know, when you get high off that shit, you, uh, you can fucking literally hear almost like a fucking, you know, you can hear really like from far away or whatever. Um, so... I remember being in my mom's garage, fucking high as fuck, with the shotgun tripping on, uh, tripping on, uh, fucking cats that were in the backyard. You know what I'm saying? Like, just 
wild, bro. It's just stupid. Like, you know, you're high and fucking clock the shotgun and, and, and in my head I was like, come on, motherfuckers, come out. It was just some fucking cats creeping in the fucking grass in the back. Like, not in the grass, but the, the leaves, you know? So I would fucking be. Yeah, you That shit just drove me nuts, bro. Hey, Rick. What up? Yeah. Hold on. What you know about crack cocaine, bro? Who I know about? Tell me a little bit about you and crack that's cocaine. That's my shit, dog. Hey, we get back in the but yeah. That was my drug of choice, dog, for at least eighty nine to ninety five, dog. No, I got one right here. Yeah, that was my shit, bro. Really? So I know exactly. Like I said, homie, I hear what you're talking about. It's crazy. Like you know, I've been on on both sides of the. Spectrum. Yeah, out there getting high, doing doing me, and then uh, over there just doing it big. Dog. Rick, Making how were you able to make money? How were you able to make money and still smoke crack? I mean, I I just I what did you I, like about crack? I guess I just figured out like the how to make money, bro. Like, like um. I always knew you need to have money to get more, you know? So, my pad was always the spot, bro. Like, no matter how people look at it, like anybody that knows us in the hood, they know my pad was the spot in the hood, bro. You know? So, like, it was easy to make money there, bro. Like, everybody came through. So, it was easy to make money, bro. So, you know, just just doing it like that is easy, dog. You know, that's how I grew up. So that's what I'm used to. And I grew up in that in that age, bro. So, you know, I grew up in the crack era. So, you know, that was the drug of choice. But I mean, I fucked with everything. I fucked with that. I fucked with Sherm. I fucked with um acid. You know, I fucked with a little bit of everything, dog. So, you know, it is what it is, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. love, I, when I got introduced to crack cocaine on 50 with the homie Whisper, uh, Whisper from my neighborhood. Um, Oscar's brother. Oscar's brother, yeah, Whisper <laughs> on 50. Yeah. I lived on Eldred in 50. Whisper lived on Terrace 49 in 50 along with all the creatures right there and everyone else that ran 50. Crack cocaine, me and the homie Whisper. Man, crack cocaine will have you do things that- It's, it's wild, bro. That, that you will regret for the rest of your life. Yes. <laughs> I, I honestly never got to that point because I was always a fucking hustler. So my father taught me at a young age to work on cars, right? Um. My father, remember, my father got the business in 2000. Uh, he started working in the business in 1998, right? Uh, he took over the business. The guy, uh, you know, wanted to retire. He took over the business in 2001. So that's when CR Automotive was established. So mind you, um, after sixth grade, seventh grade, eighth grade, after school, my dad would literally pick me up from school and take me straight to the shop. So I was around all these motherfuckers all day, fucking seeing all this shit, you know. I didn't really want, I didn't really pay attention because I didn't really, like I said, I always wanted the hustler side. I didn't want to be a hard worker. So I didn't really pay attention, but it's just, you know, I was always, always, always there. So I was taught in a young age to fucking work on cars. So when I got into my, my like, I didn't really get into, you know, I know I could say my addiction was it started in high school, but, um, it wasn't, it wasn't really, it didn't spiral out of control until I actually got out of high school. Um, like I said, I was introduced accidentally into fucking crack cocaine. That shit made me fucking do the worst things I'd ever do in my life. You know what I mean? I, I thank God I never did anything stupid like fucking. Name, name one of them the, the, when you're on crack cocaine. Um, I, 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 I was, I clucked the. A promise ring. Click the promise ring that was for my wife. And uh, I got it back, but I clucked it. You know, that's how bad. And that was, to me, even the guy told me, you know, when I did that shit, he's like, bro, 
I don't want to do this to you. Don't I don't want to take this from you. And I was like, don't trip. I'm going to get you the money. You know, but that's how bad it got. It was a fucking $3,000 ring that I had bought to get my wife to promise her that I was going to marry her one day. And I fucking clucked it. And I got it back. You know, I got it back a couple weeks later, but that's how bad it got. Yeah. Like, it was fucking bad, bro. And it's crazy because, you know, no matter what, you know, my dad still fucking... My dad started looking for help for me. My father, at this point, you know, he'd been in business for a long time, and uh, he met, met a lot of people. You know, my father's a very nice, he's a very cool person. You know what I mean? He's very good to, to deal with. So he, he knew a lot of people. So I remember uh, at this point my father bringing people over to me at the house and, and giving me lectures. Like, not lectures, but talking to me about, all about drugs and life. You know what I mean? Trying to tell me, like, you know, like what you're doing, what, you know, it's wrong. Like, don't like, you know, don't let that shit fucking, you know, ruin your life. And, you know, and he brought some real motherfucking gangsters. Like to this day, yeah, there's a man that my father brought. That's a real good friend of ours. You know, Chente, he fucking, he's a real motherfucking gangster, you know, from Azusa. And, uh, you know, he brought him over to my house. I think I was like in fucking senior year. I was about like 17 and he brought him over and he's like, look, I just got out of fucking doing like 15 years, he said. Over over being a fucking, you know, gang member and doing stupid shit, he said, you know. And uh, he's like, the route you're going in, you're bound to go where I went. You know, because you're hanging out with the fucking, you know, the hoodlums, the fucking knuckleheads. Um, you're dealing with drugs. You're doing drugs. You're bound to do something stupid that's going to fucking put you away for a while. Yeah. And... Uh, you know, I, I kind of listened to him and I was like, all right, you know. But I still kept doing what I was doing. Not as much, but I kind of did, like, you know, take it into consideration. And um. so, yeah, so at this point I was cracked the fuck out, 19 years old, 18 years old, not listening to dad, fucking not giving a fuck. Um, I got my first, uh, first possession charge, my felony. You know, I got fucking... I had uh, I had about twelve uh, Vicodin pills on me in the in the bag. I had uh, an eighth of coke in one bag, and I had three different uh, small baggies with another with coke in them, with like less than maybe like a gram and a half each one. Yeah. And um, and then I had a bullet, what we call the bullet, which is that you know that little piece that you have coke in and you flip it, you you know. Then yeah. You, yeah. And you. Pfft, yeah, and uh, we got pulled over. The fool that was driving, my boy, was on parole, and uh, we had just picked up all the pills and all the shit. We were about to get back to the pad to go fucking, you know, put it away to get, you know, to settle it. And we got pulled over, so I had a you know, all the shit was on me. So I caught my first possession charge, and uh, uh, you know, I, I um I ended up fucking being a dumbass and signing. Uh, Prop 36 back then. Yeah. Prop 36. So I told him I was an addict and that uh, I needed help. But along the way, these motherfuckers made me sign uh, to lose my my Second Amendment right to own a firearm. And I didn't, like, it was never properly explained to me. Yeah. But they say you got to sign this in order for you to get the Prop 36. Yeah. They made me sign. So I could never own a firearm because of that stupid as fuck. It's dumb. But I ended up getting that, uh, you know. So I started doing um, classes, right? So I started doing, uh, I started meeting the, you know, the meetings, the AA and stuff, you know. And, uh, you know, I remember being around all that shit. And, uh, it, uh, you know, I wasn't fucking ready. I was never ready. I was like, this is, this is for fucking real fuck-ups. I'm not fucking up. Like. You know, I got my shit straight. I'm going good, you know. So I did what I had to do. I completed that shit, got that shit out the way, but I continued doing, I continued living dirty. You know what I'm saying? Like, and um, from, at that point, I had stopped doing crack, right? Magic, not magically, but like I had, my father took me to rehab. I think that was one of the times, the first times I detoxed in uh, ARC in Pomona. They, he took me into detox from uh, 
for that shit. And, uh, you know, I got out. I stopped doing that shit. And, and tell me why I fucking got introduced to meth. Uh, somehow the foods I was kicking, it was always the motherfuckers I was kicking it with, but not the, not my original homies, my day ones. It was more of foods that I would meet out there. You know what I'm saying? Like street hood, hoodlums type shit. And uh, some food just introduced me to meth. He was like, what have you done? I was like, coke, crack. He's like, bro, all that shit's whack. You got to try this shit. And I remember he popped out a pipe, you know. And uh, I was like, what the fuck's that? He's like, don't trip. I'm going to show you how to hit it. Just just in hell when I tell you to. You know what I'm saying? And I was like, all right, fuck it. So uh, I took a rip. He started fucking swinging it. You know, you, how you, you know, whatever, how you do that shit. He started doing the thing, and I just started hailing I let out a big ass fucking cloud and literally I felt the fucking hairs in the back of my head growing like I just felt this fucking weird ass sensation in my head and the first thing I wanted to do was drive I wanted to get in the fucking car and just drive it was weird as fuck so I did I took off and I fucking started driving for like fucking an hour came back and I was fucking couldn't stay still you know what I mean I started doing we were inside a shop uh at this point, we had a, one of my friends had a, uh, a performance shop, right? And um, <clears throat> it was, you know, one of those type of shops where it was a fucking performance shop during the day and at night. It was a fucking chop shop, straight up, you know. So, you know, you do fuck, we do insurance jobs, we do all that shit, so. It fit in perfect for me because the meth would allow me to stay up and have energy all night. Because we would work by night and day. During the day, we'd fix fucking high-performance cars, two or three cars, and fucking 9, 10 p.m. would come. We'd close up, and then they'd start bringing in fucking Silverados and Tahoes to fucking start stripping, you know? And then it's crazy because it's, <laughs> it's stupid because we would time each other, you know what I'm saying? Like, we would fucking be like, all right, who, who can get the fucking motor out? We'd pull the motor, transmission, harness, computer out. Like, bam, you know, like who can get it out the fastest, you know? And being all fucking smoked down on meth, I was fucking, I was a beast. You know, being uh, a mechanic since, you know, I started working on dirt bikes when I was 15 years old, 14 years old. My father bought me my first dirt bike and I, I fucked it up one time and I ended up having to take that shit apart and fucking put it back together, you know? So, you know, I had, I had experience. So when I was working at that chop shop, I was fucking... You know, I was doing it, you know, I was having fun, you know, it was fucking the adrenaline, the fucking rush. Like, it was just cool as fuck, you know, and the, you know, at that time. And um, it was cool as fuck until some shit went down and um, the whole place got surrounded. Fucking cops fucking ended up fucking. It, it was it was a crazy, crazy event. Um, we. Um, my boy. um had some people that uh, he owed money to, and uh, apparently he didn't want to pay them, so they uh, they showed up to the shop deep, you know, thinking that they were just gonna fucking show up and fucking get their money or whatever. And it it wasn't over like my boy being grimy; it was more like some shit just didn't go the way they wanted it to, and they just said, you know what, fuck that, I just want my money back. But my boy was like, nah, you know what, I'll fix it for you. Don't worry, you know, like I can't give you your money back. But um, they didn't want that. They wanted their money. So long story short, these motherfuckers came to the shop one day and uh, it was in the middle of a Friday night. So we started fucking squabbling. We all started fighting and uh, fucking, you know, I saw my boy's little brother fucking getting hit. Like, you know, there was a big ass fool on top of my boy's little brother and um, Richard. And so I had a fucking, I had a, I think a 45 six hour and so i ended up fucking pulling the gun out and just clocking the fool in the head once like boom just because i had already tried to pull the guy off of him but he he, he there was no way the motherfucker was huge and i wasn't that big so this motherfucker was so i i had no choice i pulled the gun out and just fucking pistol whipped him in the head knocked that fool out started bleeding and then i picked my boy up and fucking you know i told him to like, get the fuck out of here go you know so when I pistol with the shit out this motherfucker, knocked them out, some other fools started pulling them towards the outside, and then these fools were like, you know, they started, you know, because they saw that we had, that I had a gun and whatnot, they called the cops. And um, 
it was Upland, you know what I mean? Upland PD fucking moves quick. There's not a lot of shit going on up there. So yeah. these motherfuckers showed up. We fucking closed down the shop. And uh, they didn't have a warrant to get in, so they just kept walking around the shop. And, um, you know, it was it was wild, you know, some stupid shit that we did. And uh, we ended up uh, having to run out. We ended up sneaking out the back, and there was an empty lot. We jumped out over the lot, and then we had a good friend of ours that... Uh, that picked us up and uh, and took us uh, back to one of our friends' houses. But that's just the stupid shit that meth led us to, you know what I mean? Like, we would do some shit that was just wild, bro. It was just, uh, I, I, um. Was meth the worst out of all the drugs? Yes. And how so? Uh, meth, because, you know, uh, I, I, I wanna say crack and meth, I don't, I wanna say crack was probably worse. Yeah, I, but I, meth was as bad, just as bad. But crack was just worse because crack, uh, crack, uh, it it uh, like you didn't give a fuck, and you had to get the next hit. Yeah, I remember one time I had to make my dad pay for a hit. That's how bad it was, bro. Did he did he know he was paying for it? Yes, him? he knew. I told him like, Dad, I'm fucking. You know, he was trying to help me out to get clean, right? So he goes, "What do you need? Like, let's 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 uh taper you in down." And I remember I was like, oh, yeah, 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 okay, 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 okay. And um, he's like, he wanted to see who my connect was more than anything. Yeah. You know, so he's like, all right, let's meet up with your connect and let's get something. And he's like, after that, I'm going to take you to rehab. And I was like, all right, that's cool. So I literally met up the connect, fucking seven, uh, Jack in the Box right there on Dudley. And, uh, you know, my dad was in the car and he was just watching. You know, he gave me 20 bucks to pick up and I picked up a sack. And uh, it, it's crazy because he, I mean, he did it because I was crying to him that I was, like, I was fucking withdrawing and this and that, you know, and I needed help. You know, we we manipulate, you know what I mean? As, a, as addicts, we manipulate, we lie, we fucking, you know. And so I did that to manipulate my father to pay for that shit. And um, he did and fucking, then he found out who my fucking plug was. And uh, he, he, he went and did some other shit that I don't want to talk about, but. Yeah, um, I never saw that plug after that. He never fucked with me again. Yeah, um, and yeah, just like my dad said, he had, he took me to detox a couple days that the next day or whatever. Um, but I, yeah, I do want to say uh, crack was probably the worst, but meth was just as bad. I remember back in the day, we got a lot of our people off of uh, crack with the meth, and and it, and it it actually turned. Uh, are people that were on crack to better people once they got on the meth because they were able to be productive. Yes, that part. They were able to actually do stuff. And with crack, you can't. You panic and you're just fucking, you're just stuck, dude. You just, it's weird. It's weird. I mean, the feeling, I'm not going to lie to you, fucking the euphoria gives you is fucking crazy. Like one through a hundred is fucking literally like a hundred. Yeah. Um, meth is, is, maybe like a 70 percent high like as close as far as like how we're talking about yeah um but um that shit will make you slot like uh slobber like you're fucking that's how fucking it numbs you the fuck up and, and you just start fucking uh, start slobbering it's like just i mean crack is the only thing that I, i've ever tried to check myself into rehab with really yeah i was i was yeah, crack, crack is a, a devil of a drug, bro. It's fucking wild, bro. Yeah, it's really uh, like with with meth. There's a lot of things that that matter with meth, right? You know that you want to do, but when you're smoking crack, crack is all you want to do is take the next hit. Yes, it doesn't matter. Ooh. I mean, with meth, you know, it gives you uh, like you might in your circumstance fix a car or, or if it's a mom that has kids she's going to clean the house and the house is going to be spotless you know what I mean it's going to give her motivation to do things um, but crack is a, is a horrible drug bro. horrible horrible crack is a horrible drug um, I'd never fucking yeah it's really and, and, and I tried to check myself into rehab one time I was leaving uh <laughs> I was leaving Jesse Pix's house when he was with uh, Trish. 
Yay, Rick. Um, yeah. Yeah. And uh, I, I was trying to find a rehab to check myself into. And the house that I was into was uh, already moved out of some female that I was with at the time, probably the first baby mama. And uh, the house was a mess. We, she moved out of the house. We moved to the house. I was supposed to be out of the house, but I was still there. It was just shit all over the floor. And I remember I seen a, I seen a, I seen a piece of a McDonald's French fry on the floor, and uh, I thought it was a, a piece of crack, mm -hmm. bro. Yes, and, that's what we do. And when I picked it up and I tried to smoke it, anybody that picks anything up off the floor and tries to smoke it. You're fucked up, though. We've all done that. Bro. You're fucked up, and I was fucked up, and I used to clown people that did this shit, bro. That's what we do. We, me and the homies were clown like, "Dude, look at this fool. This fool cracked the fuck out, bro. He's trying to look for shit on the floor. You know what I mean? Whoa, whoa, that, you know. you, you can and go. I've been there, bro. The lowest. I've been to the lowest of the lowest, the lowest of the lowest, and that's why to this day I'm a humble. I'm a humble man. I'm a humble person, bro, and I have compassion for people that have been down this road because I've been that guy that I clowned on. But but nobody was there to see it. I mean, because I still had a sense of pride, even though when I was on drugs, that I don't want. I didn't. I wasn't gonna let nobody see me uh, pick something off the floor, and nobody can ever say that they see me do that. I can only share this story because I was by myself. But nobody ever. None of my homies can ever say, "Oh, lucky was trying to pick something off the floor and smoke it." Nah, because you know what I mean. You know, we we still you fucked up, but. <laughs> you hold a sense of, of pride and respect and you ain't gonna do that shit because you know, you, you're from the turf, you're from the hood and it's your name, that and the other. But uh, crack is a horrible drug, bro. And then, so then we, 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 meth, meth was, you know what I mean? You know, meth, pe girls would fix themselves up, you know? Girls would put, be able to put makeup on, but if, if the girls were on crack, you know, they want to put makeup on because they're on crack. You don't have no nothing else, no time to do anything but smoke crack, you know? Whew. Yeah, so, wild, so, 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 so methamphetamine. Yeah, so I started uh, doing uh, methamphetamines, right? And um, that shit just fucking, it changed. It also, everything changed my life when I tried it, right? But this motherfucking drug, uh, you know, at this point, I had already met my wife. I had already had. Uh, wait, first off, I had a. I have a. I have a thirteen-year-old son, right, Junior. He's about to turn fourteen this year. Uh, he was there. You know, this was when I was twenty years old. I met his mother, and we had a really good relationship. And uh, you know, I ended up living with her for a couple months, years, and uh, she ended up getting pregnant and had my son. Um, but unfortunately, I was. Uh, I was a motherfucking dog, you know, I was a player. I grew up with the mentality that to me it was like, you gotta have two girls, unfortunately, because of what, what I would see. You know, I always told myself, I don't ever wanna be like my dad. I, would, I always told myself, I don't ever wanna be like my father. I don't ever wanna be like that. I don't ever wanna be an addict. I don't ever wanna be an alcoholic. So many times I said that shit to myself. And I ended up doing exactly fucking everything that he was. I, I, I doesn't, I don't know. It's crazy. It's just we're programmed like that. At least that's how I was, you know. I ended up fucking in high school. You know, I had a fucking. We had two different lunches in fucking Ganesha, right? Lunch one and lunch two because it was separate, right? So I'd fucking have a girlfriend in first lunch and a girlfriend in second lunch, like stupid, like you know. And they wouldn't last, you know. It never lasted. It was always fucking quick and everybody would find out and bam you know one of them would leave you but my mentality was always like i gotta fucking have two girls you know i'm not happy with one so when i got my when i met my first uh baby mama flora um you know we hit it off like i said earlier because you know we met we had a lot of people in in, in common friends you know her her family was all drug dealers and i knew them all you know i had worked for them i had moved work for them so when I told her all that shit, she was like turned on by it, you know, so we kicked it off, you know, and, uh, you know, we had a real cool fucking, she liked to drink, she was outgoing, she liked a little coke too, you know, a little, just a little bit. Yeah. And um, so we, we we lived together at that point. I, I moved to uh, Bowling Park, you know, to Bowling Park, and uh, I was living 
at her parents' house for a bit, working with her brothers. You know, I left my father, and I was doing fucking landscaping. And uh, I quick, quick to, to it, I mean, it was quick because it was like, I, it wasn't cut out for me. You know, I, I, I couldn't, um, I don't know, I just didn't like it. You know, they did commercial landscaping and uh, that shoot, you were talking about like, they did the best buys and fucking big ass targets and, you know, big ass motherfucking buildings where they had to do all the landscaping. And so that shit wasn't cut out for me. I was like, nah, I can't. So I ended up leaving them and uh, working at a fucking warehouse out there in Baldwin Park. She got pregnant, and uh, we had our we had our son, and um, I was 20 years old, right? Uh, then we ended up getting an apartment in Pomona. We moved back to Pomona. I had my first apartment when I was 20 years old, and uh, it's crazy because it's right there in the hood where right now I have my shop, you know, next door to uh, where my boys from Colima's Tires are at. You know, shout out to my boys, fucking the Lepes right there, fucking you know those those guys are a big part of my fucking story too you know what i mean edward daniel you know to this day they're my boys you know colima's tires right down fillmore if y'all ever need tires fucking hit them up it's a family-owned business as well they take pride in what they do and you know but anyways i had my first apartment there right and um fucking wild bro i had her there pregnant and and uh i would bring in fucking grupos like musicos you know what i mean because i was I was hustling. I was out out there fucking doing stupid shit, and I would get home at fucking four in the morning with the fucking banda, not a banda, but you get what I'm saying, like a group, or like a, a group of five, uh, like five people playing, and start fucking playing in the living room, like you know. Yeah. I thought I was fucking, you know, yeah, doing big things. And so long story short, I, I was always cheating on her as well. You know, I wasn't. I was never uh, faithful because I was a fucking dog. You know, I was sick in the head. You know, my mentality, the way I thought, the way I was raised was different. And I was a dog. So um, one of the guys that uh, we met a group of people that were hustlers as well, that were her girlfriend's boyfriend's friends. And we were always around them. You know, they used to sell Coke. And so I was like, hell yeah. She cooked, she hooked me up with them and I started getting better prices, different things. We were working. Long story short, the fucking one of the brothers ended up... Uh, you know, I was always there. I was, you know, as growing up, I was always, you know, stupid because I was always a little show off. I was always a little, um, just, I was always trying to tell people that I was like trying to make myself look cool, right? So I would always do things, right? And I would go over there and brag about it. Like, damn, you know, I, I remember back then I was driving my dad's tow trucks, right? My dad had a tow truck. And um, I would always, you know, go and do stupid shit in that tow truck. Like, I would, at night, I would tell my girl, like, hey, I'm going to go tow some fucking cars, and I would end up at the strip club, you know? Yeah. And I would fucking, you know, waste money at the strip club, and then the, the next day, I would go over there to those fools' pad and be like, yeah, last night I was at the strip club, you know, this and that, woo, woo, woo. And those fools were like, I don't know if they were low-key hating or what it was, but um, one of those fools ended up telling her, like, hey, this fool doesn't appreciate you, you know? This fool's out there fucking doing stupid shit. She she uh, she had already had my baby, right? And my son was at this point maybe like two years old. And so she ended up flipping out on me and like telling me like, that's it, you know? I heard like all the shit you've done and this and that. And she left my ass, you know? And I fucking lost it, you know? Because it was my first son, you know? It was my everything to me, you know? It was, it was, it was wild, you know? It was, it was, you know, I never thought that that's how it was going to be. And, um, you know, I lost it. I got deep into the drugs, you know. I um, I went over there to that fool's pad and I called him out, you know. And I told him, like, hey, you know, we got to fucking get down. I mean, like, you fucked up. Yeah, he came out. He, he had balls. To his, I respect the man now. Like, you know, he's, she's still with him, you know. He's cool as fuck. And, um, you know, he came out. We did our thing, you know what I mean? We fucking, we, we you know, we got down. You know, I'm not going to say I beat him up. I'm not going to lie. I got, I was so fucking tweaked out and skinny that I, I, you know, I'm not going to lie. I'll be honest with you. I kind of got my ass beat. And, uh, you know, I walked away from that shit. And shout out my boy Benji from Sanchez Tires. He was there with me. You know, he backed me up. Lepe from fucking Colima's Tires was there with me as well. Like, they never fucking let me, you know. Regardless of that, they never fucking backed out. You know, I told him, like, hey, we need to go over there and I need you fools to watch me. You know what I mean? Because this shit's about to go down and that fool has brothers and I don't want those fools coming out. They're going to get jumped. I don't want to get jumped. So these fools came and, you know, I did my thing and 
you know, what happened happened and I left. And, um, you know, I was fucked up for a while because I was hurt, bro. Like, I really loved this chick, you know what I mean? I really, um, you know, she had my first son. So to me, that was like crazy. And um, <clears throat> it took me a while to fucking, you know, I had to go to rehab one in one of those. I ended up at ARC detoxing. Um, somewhere al along that way, I, around that time, I, I, I was introduced into Xanax, which was the fucking, my kryptonite. Um, I was introduced to Xanax and, and uh, I got really addicted to that shit. And, you know, that shit fucked me up even more than fucking meth almost. Yeah, how so? I mean, speak on that. Xanax, man. Um, so Xanax, would, it relaxes you, right? It, it relieves you of anxiety. But... Um, if you do too much, Xanax will wipe your memory. Literally, brain eraser. Like you'll you do Xanax in the morning, and the next day you won't remember what you did all day. If you do an excessive amount of Xanax, obviously, if you take the dose that the doctors give you, that doesn't happen. But I'm talking about like the doctors prescribe you like, oh, do a quarter of a bar per, yeah. per day or per eight hours. I was doing a whole fucking bar, like four pieces. You know? So, mind you, I was fucking high as fuck, and that shit just makes you forget everything you do. So the next day, it's fucked up because this is where it went. Does, does so, Xanax really make you forget everything that you do? Yes. Well, okay. in the in that time lapse, in that time lapse of when you're high, yes. So, um, Xanax. So this is check this out. So I worked at my father's business, right? CR Automotive, right there in Pomona, right? And um, this is how fucked up it was. And it sucks, dude, because it's fucking so embarrassing. Like, so just, it sucks, bro. It just sucks that I was that fucked up. Um, I would take Xanax, right? And uh, check it out. So I would have people that would pull up and be like, hey, um, how's my car coming? You know? And I'd be like, what car? They're like, the white Honda Accord I dropped off three days ago. You told me you were going to call me. You haven't called, so I came by to see if it's ready. And I hadn't touched the fucking car. Because I had no fucking idea. I didn't remember. And it was that fucked up. A lot of people did that. And, you know, I would always, you know, I would always think fast. And I would always try to fucking, you know, oh, you no, know, yeah, yeah, yeah. The white hunter cord, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, you know, um, we. I'm barely going to get to it. Give me a little bit more time. I'm sorry. You know, this, you know, some of the people get mad and be like, you know what? Fuck this. I'm taking my shit elsewhere, you know, yeah. because I was fucking up bad, you know. Um, some people would be like, oh, okay, it's all right. You know, don't worry. Call me when, you know, and at that point I'll start fucking writing it down and be like, oh, fuck, you know, I got to fucking check this car for this, this and that, you know? So it, that's in, in that sense, it fucked me up. Meth, meth, you're fucking tweaked out. You're, you're, um, you know, you're fucking on point. Like you're just, your mind is just going hundred miles per hour. Boom, 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 boom. But Xanax slows you down and it, uh, it wipes your memory if you, if you use a lot of it. Yeah. So it fucked me up in that sense where, you know, um, it was fucked up because my father would know to say, you know, hey, did you do what I told you to do yesterday? And I'd be like, fuck, what are you talking about? And he'd be like, are you fucking kidding me? We fucking talked about it for 10 minutes. And you don't fucking remember? And, you know, I was so fucking embarrassed that I was like, oh, no, it's okay. Uh, this and that, you know, this. I'm just not... I don't remember exactly because I have a lot of shit on my mind. You know, I'd always fucking come up with some fucking excuse, you know. I was a big-ass manipulator, a big-ass liar, you know. So, um, at that point, the Xanax was real strong back then, right, when it was around that time. It was when it was real strong. And um, my father could tell that I was high on Xanax because my eyes would get fucking, uh, literally, they would like, uh, I don't remember what he used to say, but they used to be like, like, you can... Just you can see in your eyes that you were high as fuck because they would be like real low and then they would be like, and you could just tell because you would you, I would slur a little bit, you know what I mean? So, um, and one of those times he um he ended up telling me like, hey, you know what? Like you're fucking up. We gotta fucking take you to rehab. And I have people, you know. My father was working on uh, there was a rehab down the street from my father's shop, American Recovery Center (ARC), and over. You know, my dad had been in business already for like 12 years. He had worked on a lot of people there, that their cars. So he had connects there. And uh, he started utilizing them when I was in my addiction at that point, you know. 
he um he called in the supervisor for the uh detox and uh took me in and uh you know they took me in the next day they put me into detox you know first time <coughs> put me into detox and um how was that journey uh, um, as far as the detox? Did, did you fight the detox? Did you fight your pops in um, regards to putting you into check rehab? Check this out. Check this out. So my dad told me he was going to take me to <coughs> detox. Uh, let's say tonight, right? Yeah. He told me, I'm taking you to detox tomorrow morning, right? Yeah. So I said, all right, cool. So that night, I did everything possible to try to get high, you know? And... Uh, <sighs> The, the next day in the morning, um, I stole one of my dad's cars to fucking go out, and I was fucking patent handling, bro. Never in my life have I ever done that. This is the only time I did that. I was on mission and reservoir in a gas station panhandling. That's how fucked up that shit had me. I was panhandling, like, to try to make money to get high to fucking, you know, before I went into rehab. And I remember... Uh, um, you know, I, was, I stole the car, right? So I fucking was going. Somehow, uh, I think at this point, my sister was already driving, and my sister and my mom started chasing me. And uh, we were fucking going up and down Holton Mission, running around, till finally I stopped, and they were like, give me the fucking keys, you know, you need to fucking go, like, that's it, you know? And, uh, yeah, I ended up fucking having to pretty much turn myself into fucking detox. I, f I fought it, but once I was already there, I was like, fuck it. You know, it was my first time. I was like, what, what? I don't know what the fuck this is about, you know? So I ended up getting doing it, and uh, I was afraid of needles and shit like that, right? My biggest fear has always been needles. I've never done heroin or nothing like that because of that, you know what I mean? If not, I'd probably be fucking heroin junkie as well. Um, but the first thing they do is they pull, they draw blood from you, you know, to see what you have in you and all that shit, you know? And so I, I was like, fuck, no, I'm not doing this shit and this and that. So I was trying to leave. And they can't hold you against your will. They can literally, if you want to walk out, you can walk out. But um, I don't know. Something just told me, you know what, just fucking do it. So anyways, I ended up getting that shit uh, done. And um, I ended up staying, right? So it's a, it's a, depending on what you're doing, it's a 10 to 14 day process. So um, I was on Xanax, crack, uh and uh, they took me in, right? They ended up giving me medication to come off the Xanax because that's the main thing. If you just stop cold, <clears throat> cold turkey on Xanax, you you can, uh, um, you have with you have withdrawals and you can have seizures like real bad. You can hurt yourself. So that's why Xanax is very important to to have, you know, uh, uh, to be in a controlled environment to to detox from that shit. And um, you know, they give you some sick ass medication. So the first two days you get there, you just sleep. You sleep, and uh, from there they start giving you like fucking muscle relaxers so that you don't get all like you are all tense and fucking you know. And uh, from there they start tapering you down. They give you a because I was I was detoxing from uh, uh, Xanax, which is a benzodiazepine. So they give you a different benzodiazepine that's lighter to to taper you off. So when you get there, they literally get you high. You get high before going in. You go in, and then you get you, uh, you. They give you a little dose, so you get in there. You're like, ooh, you know, you start feeling good. Like, damn, okay, cool, cool, cool. I like this place, you know. But as you stay, you know, in the next hour they give you another dose. The next hour, the next uh, four or five hours, whatever they go by, five or six hours, something like that. And they can continue. They continue to give you that dose until about the third day. They start tapering you down. Boom, boom, boom. By the seventh day, you're off. Uh, your body's still kind of like in shock, so you you still want it, but uh, they're giving you other stuff to help you with it. Uh, they allow you to smoke cigarettes and all that shit to help you with anxiety. And so um, I remember the first time I only made it to about uh, 10 days. Yeah. 10 days, and I fucking walked out against fucking medical ad uh, advice or whatever, against medical AMA or whatever they call it. Um, you know, I was like, Eighth day, I was already doing push-ups, you know. Ninth day, I was, like, fucking looking at myself in the mirror, like, yeah, I'm good. We, we don't need to be here. And then after that, I just bounced. I fucking walked out, literally grabbed my shit, put it in the bag, and you can you can literally just walk out. The alarm goes off, but, you know, they try to talk you out to, uh, into not leaving and stuff like that, but, you know, when you're fucking set on that type of shit, you just you just dip. You don't want to hear nobody's shit.
Yeah. You know, so I would dip out and my dad would get pissed, you know. You, my dad always wanted me to do a whole program. He didn't want me to just detox and get back out. My dad's like, you need help. You need fucking to stay there, ass, your ass there for a fucking year if you can. You know what I'm saying? And I was always like, nah, fuck no. We don't need to do that shit. Yeah. So I'd always get back out. And I'd be clean for like maybe two, three months. And then I would relapse into the fucking same shit, Xanax or, or Vicodin, whatever it was. And back in the rehab, back in the detox. It's so fucked up because the girl in the front desk ended up becoming one of my, she was one of my dad's customers. You know, she was a really good, cool lady, like real cool lady. And um, I had her number. So I didn't have to call the fucking facility and say, hey, I need to get into detox. It was a two week process to get into detox. I had the fucking phone where I would call and say, hey, I'm coming in tomorrow at 9 a.m. And I'm, you know, I need a detox. So they would take me in. I had it like that. Like, that's fucked up. You know, I mean, that's how fucking much of an addict I was that I had it like that. Like, you know, I was fortunate to say, hey, I would call. Uh, there was times where I'd call like at 8, 8 p.m. tonight, you know, be like, hey, you know what? I'm fucking fucking up again. I've been using for a week. Um, I'm running out. I want to detox, you know, and they would be like, be here tomorrow at fucking 8 a.m. And I'll show up, you know, and I'll detox. And um, that's why, you know, and, and you say in the in the comment, you know, 21 detoxes, because it was literally so easy for me to get get high off Vicodin and Norco and before before uh, withdrawing, just detoxing. Yeah. And then getting clean for a couple of days and then eventually doing the same thing again. What is your what is your mom saying all this time? My mom. Um, Cigarettes over there. My mom is. Um, she loves me. She's very chill. She's, uh, yeah. you know, me home. You know, get your shit together. Don't be doing that. You know, you're fucking up. But she was never really tough on me. She, so, it, so to be it's, honest so with it's you, so it's mainly your pops that's tough on you with yes, this. Yes. So ashtray, please. Part of this, uh, to 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 be honest with you, my mom was my number one enabler, which is what we call. You know, the was she? Yes, she was my enabler because uh, when I was in my addiction and I got kicked out of my father's house, um, I was living inside that chop shop and um, I would literally come home to shower and my mom would feed me and give me uh, money, you know. And um, so she was always she loved me so much that she couldn't fucking be hard on me. Huh. So, you know, she still lectured me. Don't get me wrong, but it was more like. Mijo, don't do that. You know, you're fucking up. You're fucking up. And, you know, but here's 40 bucks for gas and food. You know, you know that shit didn't go for that shit. You smoke? I'll try. Yeah, I'll light that up. Um, but, yeah, she was she was always, you know, unfortunately, she was an enabler towards my shit. And um, it, it kind of hurt me more than it helped me. As in, a, in your addiction, somebody that enables you. Yeah. Uh, it hurts you more than it helps you because obviously they're allowing you to continue doing what you're doing. You're yeah. Using. And, and do that great static between moms and pops. Oh, big time, bro. There was, they were always fighting because of that. Cause my dad was like, you don't fucking tell him shit. You know, he does what he does because you don't fucking tell him shit. You know? And my mom was like, you fucking, you're always kidding him. You're always fucking doing this and he doesn't listen anyways. So what fucking good does that do? You know? So it was always a fucking. So it's basically uh, the blame game. Yeah. Who's the, who's the one that fought for this? You know? Yeah, and who's honestly, that for it was my father because he did coke in front of me, bro. We, I'm talking about when I was five years old. I remember sitting on my dad's lap and uh, in Monrovia when we lived in Monrovia, and I remember sitting on my dad's lap and him giving me a sip of his beer and then doing a line in front of me, you know. Yeah. And at that point, I didn't know what it was, but you get what I'm saying. Like, yeah. I was brought up with that shit. Like, you know, all my uncles were, were drug dealers. Like I said, like they all did coke in my house. You know, so I was brought up with all that shit. So here's the worst part is my father ended up raising those two families. Uh, he ended up uh, supporting those two families to this day. Yeah. My father has two wives. Yeah. My father has two wives, two families. He's, he pays for two households. He, um, you know, he takes care of both of the families to this day. He never gave that shit up. Never gave it up. Never did. Wow. You know? And, uh. I don't know if, I mean, I kind of look up to him because it takes a lot to take care of two families. Yeah. But he told me the other day, because I don't want to say, but he told me the other day, uh, 
He's like, if I can go back in time and tell myself, I wish I had someone that would have told me that we were all going to be miserable. He said, because he said, your mom's not happy. He said, she's not happy. He said, I'm not happy. So all this shit is, is not worth it. You know, he told me, he's like, I wish somebody would have told me like, hey, if you do this, this is going to fuck your life up and fuck her life up, her life up and your kid's life up, their kid's life up. And you're not going to be happy at the end of the day like you think you are, you know, because as a man, you probably think like you're going to have two wives and you're going to have fucking you're going to be happy. Right. Yeah. And he's told me, like, it's not like that. You know, it's, it's fucking, you know, not miserable, but it's it's hard because you can't keep both of them happy. Huh. Never. So, you know, it's crazy. Um, so yeah, I started detoxing, right? Um, I continued to use Xanax. Um, and like I said, I had that fucking phone number. All I would do is just call. Every three to four months, I would go into ARC to detox. They'd give me what I needed to get. And after like the eighth, ninth day, when I knew I was good, I would just walk out. Yeah. You know, so I, I, I abused that. You know, I abused the fucking the system. The system, yes. You know, I abused it because... I knew I could, I could get high as fuck, and then when I would want to, I could just go and get clean. And so I abused the system for a while. I, uh, I like I said, I fucking detox at least. I, I want to say it's more than 21 times. I was trying to get a hold of my friend Darlene, which is the, the and now the manager of uh, detox and ARC. Um, but I, I wasn't able to get a hold of her today because I wanted her to check the computer so she can tell me exactly how many times. But I know she's going to tell me it's well way over 20. You know, because I used to go every fucking... So how about when you did the full programs? Okay, so check it out. My father always wanted me to do full programs, right? But I never wanted to because I thought, you know, you thought, I thought I had it, I knew it. It wasn't it wasn't as bad as you think and this and that. So, yeah. so in 2016, I did my first... 2016, yes, I'm opening the phone because I'm checking this. 2016, I did my first... I did a detox and they said, hey... You've fucking been in here at least 12 times, motherfucker. Like, you need to do an inpatient program. Like, this detox shit is just to get you clean. And you're going back out into the real world. And you're going back out with the same shit mentality that you came in with. You're going to fucking end up using. Yeah. So you need to learn skills to fucking teach you how to fucking stay sober while you're out there. So I'm not going to lie. It wasn't on my will. It was my father that was like, if you fucking don't go to fucking, uh, if you don't do out inpatient, like, don't even come back here. Like, I don't want you at the house, the shop, nothing, you know? So I was like, all right, fuck it, I'll do it, you know? So the first time I did it in 2016, um, I was there for three months. Check this out. So I was there for three months, right? Tell me why, within the first two weeks, I get picked up by Pomona PD. You know, I'm in the middle of a fucking group at ARC, and, uh, you know, they call my name to the office. You know, Carlos Ramirez report to fucking station four, which is the main office. And um, so I walk up there and I'm like, what the fuck's going on? You know, and uh, they pull me to the side and they say, all right, check this out. This place has the right to uh, not have to say anything to the to the government, to the department, the police department. They said there's police officers here. Your father told them you were here and they're here to pick you up. So you can either tell you if you tell us to tell them to fuck off, like in other words, to tell them that they got they you're not here. We have the right to do that. We're able to. Yeah. But if you want to just go ahead and take care of whatever it is you did, go ahead. We'll we'll let you come back, as long as you don't come back dirty using you know you know use while you're out there. So I say you know what fuck this I'm gonna go let's go. Um, so it turns out prior to going into ARC this time I had. Um, I had done a big ass hit and run. Um, I was smoking crack and uh, I took some pills that were for sleeping because crack didn't let you sleep. And somehow when I took those pills, my stupid ass decided to leave my mom's house and go back to my dad's shop to steal money to go fucking buy more shit. And when I was coming down Erie to fucking get to the shop on Holt, I fell asleep on the wheel and I sideswiped three cars. Boom, boom, boom. Uh, on the third car, 
I was driving a Ford Explorer 2001. The uh, driver's side wheel fucking ripped off on the third car. Boom. And um, I just remember waking up at that point and, and stepping on it. And uh, the car was, mind you, the car was on three wheels. So the driver's side front was fucking scraping on the ground. And I kept going. And um, across the street from where my father's business is, is a church that um, we utilize to store our vehicles, you know. And um, I remember just fucking stepping on it. You know, the, I marked it all the way through, stepping on it, going through the gate, and I slammed through the gate, dropped the gate, boom. Gate dropped, and I kept going. Hit the car. I parked the car, and I fucking started running. At this point, one of the guys that would take care of the church came out and was like, I'm calling the cops. And, and um, I was like, oh, it's me, Junior, from across the street. My father will take care of this. Don't worry. And he was like... Okay, we won't call the cops then. Um, I ended up running away, and um, the cops came looking to, to my pad, to my mom's house, you know. And uh, I wasn't there. I was hiding at one of my friend's houses. Um, <clears throat> so my father ended up getting a hold of me. He said, hey, you got to turn yourself in. Whatever the fuck you did, you got to turn yourself in. You know, you fucked up, you know. So this was around... He got a hold of me like around 11, 11 in the morning, 12 p.m. I ended up turning myself into Pomona, Pomona Police Department. And um, they asked me, you know, why the fuck did you run away? I said, oh, because I was scared. You know, I, I got really scared and I didn't know what the fuck to do, so I ran. Were you under the influence? I said, no, sir. And they asked me, you know, what, what the fuck were you doing at that fucking time? It was fucking four in the morning. I said, I had stayed at my girlfriend's house. We were hanging out, and um, I was on the way back to, to my dad's shop to sleep there so that I can wake up in the morning and get to work. And um, that's when I fell asleep on the wheel. I told him I was tired as fuck. You know, we had just done the, you know, had some, you know. And so I was tired. And so they were like, okay. And um, they never tested me for drugs. So I was able to get away with that. But I did do a hit and run, um, damage to property. Um... My father had to pay for fucking, like always, my father had to fucking pay for the gate that I dropped. My father had to pay for the cars that I crashed, you know. And um, it just started getting worse from there, you know. Um, uh, it was just wild. Um, so I ended up doing the first in inpatient program, right? And um, I met a lot of good friends, friends that till this day, you know, they're probably watching this right now because I talked to them earlier. And... Uh, I met a lot of good people, bro, like in rehab. I met some fucking friends that, you know, to this day I love them. Like, you know, we told each other, like, you know, we're fucking, cl we're close as fuck. You know, you meet some, you meet some real close people, like some real good people. And, um, you know, you're like-minded people. So, you know, you guys share, you know, the same traumas and shit like that. So we, we, we bond. And, um, you know, I met a lot of people. So ARC introduced, so ARC, what it does, so like rehab in general uh rehab in general what it does is it helps us with structure accountability uh and it introduces us to meetings like outside meetings right and it teaches us to be ready to get back in society uh how to be back in society sober you know that's really what it does it just it prepares us to go back out fucking sober and deal with our problems and everything without having to fucking you know resort to drugs um but that's mainly what rehab does so when they introduce you to the actual meetings you know uh meetings teach you much more shit it's like the second part of it um meetings teach you spiritual principles morals accountability responsibilities they teach you integrity um you know you learn that you know you're powerless over your addiction uh it taught us that in order for us to succeed to overcoming our addiction we needed to create a foundation of like-minded friends that have experienced addiction and have had either if it overcame it or, or in the process of overcoming it you know so you meet a lot of good people you exchange numbers you create a uh, support group you know and that really helped me you know because coming out of um you know here's the thing is about rehabs that <clears throat> in order for 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 a rehab to work for you you have to want to stop everything and when i say everything i mean like fucking weed drinking fucking everything and not just that, also cheating, also manipulating, also lying. You have to stop all that shit. Like you can't just you can't just stop drinking, doing drugs, and continue to lie and cheat because 
it'll eventually lead you to fucking take a drink and then that'll eventually lead you to coke and the coke will lead me to fuck. That's my story at least, you know. I can't, unfortunately, I grew up in, you know, uh, I can't do cocaine without, I can't do drink, I can't drink alcohol without doing cocaine. You know, that's how I was, you know. Uh, it, it, it just was the, the thing to do was drinking coke. But, so, meetings teach you all this, uh, right? So, you know, you, you make a lot of good friends and, uh, you know, when we get out of rehab, uh, you you have to have the support group right so when we feel certain ways because fuck dude uh once you do math and crack you it, it'll never go away you could be fucking sitting right there right now where you're at and you're fucking listening to what i'm saying and in your fucking mind your mind will tell you damn right now would be fucking sick to take a sick ass rip of fucking some meth or crack like your mind will just it's literally just how an addict's mind works you can be fucking perfectly fine and the shit will tell you like let's just, let's just fucking pick up a sack you know, let's fucking go and do some shit right now, you know? And um, so that's why you're supposed to have a support group to be able to call people and say, hey, you know what? This is how I'm feeling right now, like, you know? like, And they talk you out of it. You know, as, as addicts, that's what we do. We help each other, you know? We help one another fucking get, get out of, overcome our, our little, you know, situations or fucking uh, cravings, you know? And um, yeah, so that was my first inpatient program so i got picked up right check it out so i got picked up by the pd they took my ass they just fucking they literally held me at the pomona police station for one night the next day i saw the, the judge the judge was like okay well you did a hit and run are you going to be responsible for all this shit and i said yes i have no choice i have to do it so he said all right cool so he's like exchange information with the people with the cars and then you guys deal with it if there's any issues we'll we'll come back to court so i said all right cool so yeah, I ended up exchanging numbers with the, they gave me their insurance and all that. And my dad had insurance. So we exchanged all that. And my father ended up taking care of it. And um, I got out and uh, I went straight back to uh, ARC because I wanted to complete my program. I didn't want to, my dad wanted me to, you know what I'm saying? It was always for my dad. It was always for my family. It was never for me. And um, so I went back and, uh, you know, I thought I was cool because fucking I got picked up by PD and I was back there. And, um, you know, here's the thing is about, like I was saying about rehab is in order for it to work, you want, you need to have, you need to want to stop. If you don't want to stop, there's no fucking point of you going to rehab. So my problem was that I, um, I always wanted to continue drinking. I always wanted to continue smoking. I didn't want to give up the smoking and the drinking. So that's why I repetitively kept going back, back because I would get out and I would say, oh no, no, I'm not going to use meth. I'm not going to do Coke. And the first thing I would do is smoke some weed. And the next thing you know, I'm like, well, I'm already fucking smoking weed. Why not fucking take a drink? Then I'll take a drink. Then next thing you know, after a couple of drinks, I'm fucking buzzed. And the first thing I look for is cocaine. Yeah. So, you know, from there, it turns into, it just spirals out. You know what I mean? That's just how addicts work in our minds. But it, um, I went to three, three different, re um, Two different times in a patient at uh, ARC. And, um... Damn, we're already at three hours and 15 minutes, huh? You're good, brother. Damn. This is what we do here, bro. That's wild. Yeah, that's what we do here, bro. Shit, everybody's probably falling asleep by now. No. Um, este, so, fucking three different rehabs. So, the third rehab was one of the best experiences I ever had. Grand View Foundation in Pasadena. It was a big-ass mansion in the hills. Um... <coughs> where it didn't it wasn't it didn't look like medical based type rehab it was more of a uh like uh the lady that ran it was getting um she was doing fundraisers to to get money to be able to do things so they took us to the fucking batting cages it would take us to fucking uh the theaters they would do all kinds of crazy shit for us take us to the beach and so it was a really good experience i met a lot of good people there too that i still talk to and um it was the best experience I've ever had because they gave me a, a personal uh, therapist and uh, we started dissecting my life and she started telling me how, you know, the traumas from the beginning was like the main issue. Like, so as addicts, we um, we use the drugs to self-medicate, right? Yeah. So the drugs themselves are not the issue. The issue is our mind, the way we think and the things we try to run away from, you know, we're just self-medicating. So once we reach you know, sobriety and we get into these meetings, uh, we work on ourselves, you know, work on better, bettering ourselves, you know, our, our, like I said, our fucking, um, you know, all the, the bad things we have, you know, and um, 
it, it's just yeah that's the way it works you just work on everything in general like you have you can't just get clean you have to live clean as well you know what i mean in order for it to work so it's what we we um we learn in there but um anyway so in this fucking uh place in pasadena was fucking amazing right so no matter what through all this my wife was always there for me mind you um I have, I'm not married, but I have a wife. I've been with her for 10 years. You know, she's been my fucking, uh, you know, my, my ride or die. You know, um, I have four kids with her, you know what I mean? And um, she never left my ass. You know, I did so many fucking stupid things. You know, like I have three different baby mamas. I I, um, I have kids with, yeah, three different women. And um, one of them it was uh in between being with my wife while i was in my addiction you know i ended up having a boy that's eight years old today and um unfortunately because i was in my addiction i wasn't able to be there in his life you know and it fucking sucks because today that i'm you know being a better person uh it hurts me because it's it's difficult to know that there's a boy out there that has my blood my last name and I'm not there for him. And don't get me wrong, like I've I've seen him several times. Like I see him every so often, but it's it's not what you know what I would like what I would wish I would, I could do. You know what I mean? Like I wish I could be there for him, like I am for my son and for my daughters. You know, like I wish, you know. But I wasn't able to be there because, like I said, I was always fucking up. You know, I was I was always in and out of rehab. I was always fucking doing stupid shit. So, you know, but today thankfully um i'm trying to work something out uh with his mother to try to see if maybe i can um be part of his life you know he's eight years old and i know he's a little bit older and i you know i've been there you know here and there you know but i haven't you know been there for him so i want to be able to restore that you know because he's at that age where i think if we start working on it now you know we can have a real good relationship at the time he's 15 you know or he might hate me. Who knows? But I want to try at least. You know? Absolutely, as you should. Yeah. You know what? I want to take phone calls right now. Go ahead, bro. Let's get, let's do phone calls, guys. Let's bring let's bring the phone calls in right now. Let's bring the phone calls in. Who are they calling? So I can tell my boys to call in too. Yeah, yeah. Have them call too. And the numbers pinned up there. Check it out. Check it out. Call in. Call in. Hold on, real quick. Let me see. <clears throat> Here we go. Hey, you're on Hoodstocks. Talk to us. Hey, hey, this is Joe from uh, the field. Um, hey, hey, first off, Carlos, I want to say thanks and uh, for your honesty. Uh, thanks for sharing everything. Um, I really hope you can connect back with your son. You know, you, you say it on here. So, you know, all it takes is that one step. Uh, I thank Lucky and the crew for uh, creating this platform for people like Carlos to to come and, and say what they want to say and what they feel. Um, I, I got a couple questions. Is that okay if I if I ask uh, Lucky? Yes, absolutely, brother. Um, hey, Carlos. Yes. So you got the you know your family got the body shop or the mechanical shop. Yes. Uh, how hard is that to like get off the ground with you know taxes, OSHA? Uh, you know, any regulatory bodies, is that pretty hard to like maintain? Can I be honest with you? It's fucking easy as fuck. I just opened my own shop uh, last week. You know, I've, I've been one week in business in Pomona. You know, now I'm a productive member of the society of Pomona. You know, I have my own business license. Uh, you know, I have my own uh, seller's permit. And um, it is, yeah, yeah, it yeah. is very easy, brother. So don't let that idea of whoever put that idea in your head no it's fucking simple brother yes uh when it really comes down to like osha and stuff like that if you if you get osha involved you're fucked but as long as you don't uh, call their attention which i mean you have to really do some you know crazy shit to call their attention but uh it's real easy to get the permits it's real easy to get into my father you know my father came over here uh you know without a degree from high school without papers without everything and he was able to open up his own business and, and successful today my father has two different shops you know he has one in pomona he has one in montclair he owns his own uh, uh, uh tow truck business he has at least four tow trucks you know on route um and uh he's also a uh uh um 
he's he he grows uh, corn in Mexico. He has at least like maybe three hundred acres of field of, of stuff like that. So he's a he's a business owner, like he's a businessman, you know. And I mean, seeing him do it, like it's just so easy, brother. Like it's just it's it's simple. You just it's like everything, brother. You really have to just set your goals and just set your mind to it and do it. Um, you know, it's simple, brother. You just put, you know, if you really want to get into it, it's it's easy, brother. It's not that hard. Trust me. Wow, that that's cool, Carlos. Thanks for for sharing that. Uh, I yeah. only say that because I only say that my uh, my father, when he was alive, he had a paint and body shop, and uh, I think maybe some of the the other body shops around the way maybe hot wind day maybe he was taking a little bit of business from them, and then all of a that sudden happens. OSHA showed up, and and then they said they ha- he has to pay the you know, for the OSHA yes. poster and it's like a yearly tax thing and they just kind of priced them out of the market. <clears throat> I, it, it really takes a lot for them to call, get called in. So these motherfuckers really were hating on them. Um, oh, but yeah, there's man. always, just, there's always this in business. You know what I mean? When you're doing good, there's always going to be somebody that's a little bit envious of what you do. I'll tell you this story. Um, I left my father's business. Mind you, I've been working at my father's business since I was about 13 years old, right? In Pomona, CR Automotive, auto repair shop, not an auto body, but fixing cars, right? I've been working for him my whole life, and uh, I always wanted to run that business, right? I always wanted to be the one that was, you know, in charge of it. But I was never, I was never um, ready because I was always in my addiction. I was always fucking up. I was always focused on making easy money. And um, um, just to say that, it just uh like you know is it, it it's just easy for me now like when i did my you know a couple of days ago like a couple of weeks ago like it, yeah it required a lot of money i'm not going to lie but it was just very easy to to acquire everything it was so simple i got kicked out so check it out i w- i left my father's business in december um we had a little fallout and uh in january um, I started working out of my boy's house in Pomona, uh, just a regular house garage, right? My boy had a little garage set up, shout out Brandon and his dad, you know what I mean? Um, they had a little garage and, uh, I told them, Hey, check it out. I have customers. I, I, here's another thing that I haven't talked about. So I'm a wholesale dealer as well. I buy and sell cars, right? So last year around this time of the year, uh, exactly a year ago, I uh, started looking into getting my wholesale dealer's license. So I have a dealer's license. Now I buy and sell cars. You know, I buy cars at the auction for a wholesale price. I fix them if they need to be fixed. And I ended up selling them for, you know, a profit. And um, that's what really helped me grow over the, the past year. That that kind of, you know, I started my business uh, last year in March with uh, $5,000. And by the end of uh, 2023, I had generated about $25,000 with those five grand. Wow. Out of, out of just cars that I was selling, you know, on top of what I get paid, you know, what I was getting paid with my father, which I'm not going to lie, was a good little weekly, uh, you know, salary. Hey, well, like you said, Carlos, like you, you, you've been hustling since you were a teenager and yeah. so it seems like it, it was easy for you to, to, to hit the ground running, man. Right. Um, hey, hey, Lucky. Yes, sir. Um, can, I, can, I, can we get an update on uh, stitches? So, oh, yeah, Absolutely. Hmm. And, you know, because I, I was watching that pod, and and it, and it seemed like you guys were just so on it, man. And I felt bad because, like, you guys were on it, and every facility kept saying, you know, insurance. Oh, you know, Monday through Friday, and it was just like it was just a terrible thing to watch because I could see like the effort that you guys were trying for him. What's What's your name again, bro? My name is Joe. I'm from Bakersfield. Joe from Bakersfield. Ah, oh, man. To this day, Joe. You know what, dog? <sighs> we failed him, bro. We failed. Hey, I don't think it, we failed don't, him, bro. And I'll tell you, and I, I I'll tell you why we failed him, bro. Because when somebody wants help right then and there, you got to give them the help right then and there. And and we thought we made the connection to get them the help right then and there. And on the way over there, Casey and. I think it was K9 taking him over there. Um, the dude hit me up while they're on halfway there on the freeway with stitches. And um, he, he said, hey, bro, is he in a wheelchair? And I said, yeah, bro. And he goes, oh, fuck, we don't accommodate individuals ah, in wheelchairs. That's rough. And so that, 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 that put a foot on my neck, 
right? Because hey, dog, you know what, bro? Like when people want help, I understand when they're when they're willing to accept help, help, right? You know, it's got to be right then and there, right? And so Man, I, I thought with you guys. I thought we had it right then and there. And then when that happened, it shit just like the world like came down crashing on on me you know what i mean and it may not have been crashing on the homie because you know i mean what are you gonna miss what you didn't have right you know but with hood stocks since day one bro with hood stocks since day one I feel like we have a responsibility within the community, bro, to to take care of what we set, we're set out to take care of, and um, and so mind you, that day we had a double podcast. Never have yeah. a back, never have a back to back podcast. We had a double podcast, so we were crunched with time. And I said, "Hurry up and get home. We over there, and get your asses back here because we got another guest pulling up." And so when that information came to me that they could not take him because he was in a wheelchair and they weren't handicap accessible and everybody in that house needed to be able to hit the feet and running regardless of what shape you're in um so casey said what do you want me to do and i said well and so i started making other phone calls with people that we were talking to before that uh with that during that time and um they were trying to make shit happen and mind you it's a sunday dog you know what i mean and uh and so a buddy of mine that runs uh uh project coffee cup jacob great dude bro he was trying to make shit happen he said hey look what you can do is you can take him to a hospital and the hospital hold him and it will give us time to get him into something else you know so that's right that's so, right so the guy so i said hey take him to the nearest hospital so they took him to the nearest hospital and uh, they, they dropped him off the hospital, bro. Knowing, Man, it, it, hey, bro, I don't know if he made it in the hospital. I wasn't there, bro. Man, I, I hope so. It, it seemed like uh, nah, he didn't he make had it. Hit. He didn't make it into the hospital, bro. I don't. I, we, he was taken to the hospital to get put in and he checked his name in, bro, but you know, to this day, dog, that shit bothers me, bro. Because I feel like it, it, we failed somebody that we that wanted the help at the time, dog. You well, know, it, it seemed like it seemed like Hoodstock did maybe a little bit more than uh, soft white underbelly. So uh, I think you should the whole crew should be happy about that. Hey, you know what, dog? At the end of the day. <sighs> It, it, when it comes to that, it's not a competition, bro. It's it's really it's not a competition of who's going to do more. When when the shit is put in your lap, what are you going to do with it now? You know, you know, yeah. and and but but I'll tell you this. Since that experience, I have somebody now that if I'm ever in that situation, that we get them in right away, bro. Because right. because that shit That's fucked right. me up, bro. Because uh, you know That's what, dog. Right. Dude, he's a good dude, man. He's such a good dude, and he's oh man, man that, dog. The guy, yeah. the guy was awake for four, four, four days, and I mean, you could still see the the wits he had. Hmm. Comments are fucking killing me right now. Fuck the comments, dog. <laughs> this is life. This shit's funny though. What we talk about right now is real Sorry, life. Uh, the comments ain't got nothing to do with. I'm Sorry, talking man. to Joe right here from Bakersfield. Sorry, you know what man. I mean? And uh, you know what, dog. Yeah, hood stocks, bro. Like we're fuck ups, bro. But we're hey, all of us are. <laughs> but you know what, dog? Up. Honestly, dog, I care for my brothers. You know, I care for my sisters. I don't give a fuck. Like, dude, the homie, we failed him, bro. We failed him, dog. When he wanted the help, it like you got. A, it sounds like you got some some high expectations for yourselves and. Uh, that that's good, man. Because you're only gonna succeed, you know, along that along that way. You, you know what, bro? The difference between maybe us and some other platforms, they want the content. Yeah. You know, I I I you know, if I can make a difference, 
then then we we, we doing something great within this YouTube universe, which is a lot, which is, involves a lot of fucking bullshit, bro, and shit that doesn't make no fucking sense to me, dog. But it's entertainment, dog. But but we're here for entertainment, but we're here for growth and. You know, making shit happen, production, you know, evolution of the man, of the drug addict, of us as a whole society, bro. You know what I mean? There's how many, there's not enough podcasts, bro. You know what? I don't want to say there's not enough podcasts, but I'm just saying, like, right here at Hoodstocks, dog, like, I can speak for myself. Like, you know, I feel when somebody's hurting because I've hurt. And and I don't give a fuck, bro. Like when I sit across from wow. this man right here, I feel his pain, bro. Yeah, uh, you know, empathy, wow. bro. Empathy. Uh, we, we we in this day and age, I think we're losing empathy, bro, for for one another. And it's just like it's all clickbait. It's all like catch a video, bro. Like this, that, and the other. Oh, yeah. And I might do that sometimes too. And you might think that I'm just like. You know, just being an asshole, dog. Cloud chasing, dog. But at the end of the day, like, Hoodstocks cares about the streets and we care about people that are going through hard times. Why, dog? Because I've been through that shit, bro. That shit sucks, bro. That shit's well, horrible, I, I bro. Hear, and, 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 I, I hear you. And that's, what, that's what's so important about this story right here, bro. It's, it's, sad. You, it, like- it, it's sad that we only got 361 people on the live chat bro and if you're one of those 361 make sure you hit the like dog to boost this into the algorithm of youtube so people can hear this man's story dog because you know what fuck the fame dog fuck all these dudes that are doing this that and the other dog hoodstocks is here for the normal folk and i've been we've been here for the normal folks since day one why because i'm a normal folk dog they've been through some things dog and and our stories are important you know but anyways joe you sound like a cool dude, dog, and I appreciate you calling in, brother, and, and asking these questions. And I, and I hate to, you know, not be able to give you like a fucking great, a great resolution of something that we were trying to do. You know, what I mean, like, hey, he's sober now. He's working at fucking Target right now. You know, or you know, like, dog, like, you know, and that and that can be great for someone's life too. Just working at Target from you know Skid Row or something. I'm just saying, yeah. like, it may sound ridiculous, no, it's, but you know. Hmm. Something different. Of yeah. Course, coming well, from- well, well. I, I just want to say, lucky <clears throat> thanks uh, to you, to the whole Hoodstock crew. Thanks to to, to Rick. Uh, thanks to Carlos for for uh, sharing his story. And uh, I'm sure everybody's going to be on the up and up. Thanks for your time, uh, and I'll hit y'all later. Thank you. Thank you, Bakersfield baby. Let's go. That's right. Yeah. You guys have to call in. Call in. You know what I mean. Uh, Having these conversations one? are important, dog. You want to take another one? Huh? You want to take another call? Uh, if they call in, yeah, we'll take another okay. call, bro. Yeah. So, yeah. You leveled up, bro. Leveled up. So, yeah, fucking, um, you know, where do I go with this? Fucking, let's you just talk you, about where I'm at today. Yeah, where you, you at today? You know what today? I mean? Like, I, I overcame the addiction. Um these fools are talking about well this fool's drinking well this fool's smoking the fucking pen yeah i smoke motherfucker yeah i still drink dog you know what i mean like it's all good you know what i mean i know how to fucking control that shit nowadays like i've been through so much shit that i know how to fucking uh you know i know where my limits are you know and back in the day i didn't you know what i mean now i know like i could have maybe two or three beers they're talking about talking about like, this nigga's been sipping the same beer for three three hours like yeah whatever it's been the third beer but point is is like i know what my limits are today so you know i i get to be able to drink i get to be able to smoke a little bit of weed to relax myself because i go through a lot of stress as a business owner you know what i mean um you know and I, I i i've learned to make a balance you know what i mean to make a balance is as far as like you know what you know what i could do as far as to make myself fucking relax and and forget about all the other little issues in the back you know so yeah today um you know i'm not gonna say i'm fucking clean i was two years clean i lost that about maybe um six seven months ago i decided to start smoking weed again and uh obviously drinking uh it hasn't led to any other hardcore drugs which is good Let's get this uh, call. You're on hood stocks. Hey, it. is this Wolfie? What's up, dogs? Wolfie, homie from Warren. What up, Wolf? Talk to me, baby. 
What's up, Primo Carlos? How you doing, dog? What's up, dog? You know what, dog? I love Primo Carlos' conversation because whenever I catch his boss on a party, I know to avoid him because he'll be me. He'll be talking my ass off all fucking day. <laughs> love you, dog. And it's good conversation, though. That's right. No, no disrespect, but... Yeah, I don't know if that was a compliment or that was a smack in the face for a fucking wolf. You know what I mean? What the fuck, wolf? No, his, his journey, um, like everybody else's journey, it's just not too many people could just take the whole conversation. Like, oh, Wolfie, God, ho Wolfie fucking hold on one shit. minute. Wolfie, hold on one minute. Hey, you're on Hoodstocks. Talk to us. Yeah, hey. Lefty. Yo, turn the turn the volume down in the background. Let me hear you, dog. All right, hold on. Hey, fucking Lefty. Hello. Yes, sir. I said my man, Juicy. I said my. I'm just from Pomona. That's right. Hey, fucking Carlos. Yes, sir. Como está, güey? Bien, bien aquí, mira. Gracias a Dios. You know who's this? No. It's me, Chubbs, homie. Chubbs. Oh, what's up, big dog? <laughs> That's right, that's right. Appreciate that, bro. Haven't seen you that's in a minute. Right, homie, you know. But yeah, yeah, you, yeah. You, I'll be you, by. I'll stop by. You're part of my story too, dog. You know, I grew up with you in high you school. Already know. Yeah, yes, I've been sir. knowing you since. Come on, homie. I was part of that circle. That's <laughs> right. That's right. Yes, sir. All right, homie. I just wanted to check in, send my love. You know, you know how we get down, homie. Appreciate I you, big my dog. I said Eddie B too, dog. That's and, you right. know, everybody out there, all the fellas. Eddieberto. That's right. All right, homie. I said mine, dog. Hey. Keep it up, homie. Stay up, you know. Get that grind, dog. Stop you by know, the get shop sometimes. Fuck all the haters. Like, I'll stop by. I'll be out there on Monday or Tuesday. All right, let, let me know. Send you. I send my love, homie. That's right. I love. I let them know. All right, keep that shit western, boy. You know how we get down. That's right. Shout from Pomona Westside. I send my love, Lucky and Drew. Westside, baby. Mine, homie. That's right, baby. You support the channel, homie. Thank you, brother. Appreciate you, bro. All right, homie. Let's get this next phone call. You're on Hoodstocks. Talk to us. Hey, right, what's up with all the comments? I know, right? What's up with the comments, bro? Is this C minus? Haters, so, right? But I had, a, I had a question for yeah. uh, your guest. Yes. Yeah, even though, even though, I mean, obviously being on drugs and shit's fucked up. But um, you got any any fun story that you had Bro. that you have with while you were fucked up? Oh, uh, I'm late to the podcast. I don't know if you shared it before, Bro. but let me tell any you, any fun times like fucking <sighs> being fucked up or something. <sighs> Bro, if I tell you, I mean, I would. I, this podcast has turned into like six hours, dog. Hey. But hey, I had. I'm All not right. gonna lie to you, bro. I had a motherfucking blast when I was using, bro. Like I always lived my life like there's no tomorrow. That's C minus. Love that's, you, baby. That's the way I thought. You know what I mean? Like, you know, why do? Why wait till tomorrow when you can do what you can today? So I always fucking had fucking blast, dog. You're on hood stocks. Talk to us. Hey, can this guy fix Playboy Eddie's uh, spaceship? Hell, hey, motherfucker. Hey, you bring me a motherfucking lawnmower or a motherfucking spaceship, I got you. Where are you calling from, bro? From Playboy Eddie. <laughs> he said Chubbs is a tire changer. What a dick. Ghost. <laughs> the comments are fucking hilarious, bro. But yeah. Fucking... You know, so fucking in uh, January, I decided to fucking jump off the fucking building. You know what I mean? Spread my motherfucking wings, dog. And Pops helps you with that. Ah, uh, no. Wait. Hold on. So I started my fucking wholesale dealer's license last year, right? Back in March. And I started selling cars, right? So I started seeing that there was... Obviously, I had sold cars before, but I had backed out because I wanted to focus on the shop. Yeah. Um. So I started doing that shit last year. I started selling cars. Like I said, I started with five grand, turned that shit into 25 grand by the end of the year. I started with the fucking 2009 Mercedes S550 that I bought the first time for three grand. Flipped that shit Big for like 55. Go Wait, ahead. hold on. Yeah, well, go ahead, bro. Hey, I'm disappointed in you, bro. You just called that dude that just called. You called me four C minus, homie. This is the real C minus player. Oh, my bad, dog. Talk you to didn't lock in my contact number still. You didn't text me, fucker. Disappointed on me. I love you, baby. Next phone call. You're on Hoodstocks. Talk to us. Hey, what's up, doggy? What up, G? Hey, hey question for uh, the homeboy. Yes, sir. Hey, dog. Um, was packing with an LS3 swap, dog. I mean, an LS3 yeah, swap? What do you have? 
What are you driving? Huh? What are you driving? Like a plug? Yes, sir. What are you driving? I, I, I see the plug, bro. What's that? What are you driving first? The Answer the question, what are you, sir. What, what, am I driving? what are you putting the LS3 into is what I'm asking. Fox body, big dog. A fo my Next boy, I got. You're on uh, talk to you us. cut him off? I was, I was gonna go into it with him. Hey, I know you're still out there listening, What's dog. Right? Check it out. I got a fucking What's '89 Fox body. I'm, I'm, I'm doing as well, dog. The boy out there that just called in, fucking CR Motorsports, hit me up, bro. I got you, fool. There, uh, there. Hey, you're on hoodstocks. We're gonna put all his information up okay, there. You're okay, on okay. hoodstocks. Go ahead. What's cracking, like man? It's that homie from Pacoima. Bitcoin, what the fuck you want, dog? What's that? No, <laughs> nah, just fuck with you. What's up, baby? <laughs> What's up, man? Hey, hey, welcome back to Droops. Yeah. Welcome back, sir. And hey, Carlos. Yes, sir. I'm listening. Give them, give them the hey, number. Hey, what's up? Hey, call. man. That's my boy. Yes, sir. I'm listening. Hey, hey, I can relate to your story, man. That's right. One hundred percent. That's right. You know, you know, lucky. You know, every time when I call in, you know, I'm always talking about crack. Yeah, that could kind of give you an idea. It's always some kind of crack joke. <laughs> you know, I'm, 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 I was, I was up in there in the '90s, man, and and I went through the same thing too, man. Thir Thirteen years old, beamed out. There you go. You know, booyah, man. It's great. It's some crazy stuff, man. So I, I hear you. Yeah. I hear your story, man. I can I can feel it. I love that you can relate, brother. I appreciate that. That's 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 the idea of me being up here to be able to share my story and hope that you know what I mean. Somebody's gonna hear this and say, you know what, I'm going through some shit like that. You know, it's gonna be all right. I'm gonna get through it. Like homeboy was able to fucking get over his addiction, his traumas, and now he's a fucking business owner and he's doing good for himself, taking care of all his kids. You know, I saw a comment right now where it said, you know, good luck with your eight year old boy. You know what I mean? Like with that eight year old boy, like. Dog, like, don't trip. I'm gonna fucking, you'll see. Like, uh, he's, you know, I've seen him, but it's just, we gonna get there. Don't worry. I'm working on that right now. Like, I'm taking, all my kids are taken care of. Like, you know, I have six kids, and all of them are taken care of. They, they ain't got no motherfucking, you know, worry about, you know, I, I was, today I'm able to do what I wanted my dad to do for me. You know, obviously he wasn't able to do it because, like I said, he had two families, but today I'm able to buy my kids Nikes. You know, my daughters wear Nikes, my, my son wears Jordans. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm able to do all that shit for them today because, you know, I'm a, a business owner. I'm a productive member of society. You're on Hoodstocks. Talk to us. What up, what up? This is Danny from Pomona. That's right. L22? Yo, so, L22, deuce, deuce. Okay, okay. Talk to me. Just Talk to little, me, my boy. Shout out, shout out to my boy, Carlos. You know, I've been knowing this for whoo, since we were kids. This is my boy right here. You know? <laughs> He, he's right now he's like uh on the mic you know i want the mic now i want to talk about it but it's his turn you know you get your turn you uh, get your turn there you go all i want to say is man carlos you came a long way bro a lot of people are laughing at you you know making fun of you the comments bro yeah but I, yeah Very I, Ricky, just being right there you know no nah, i'm just i'm laughing at it like it's cool it's funny that you know what i mean like all the attention i'm getting from these people regardless of whether it's good or bad it's good fucking you know, promote. good feedback, bad feedback. It's all good. It's all bro. good, bro. It's all you love. Know? You know what I mean? No matter what they're talking about me. So I ain't tripping on the comments. I'm not, I'm not mad or, yeah. or sad or any of that. You know, I'm enjoying it. I'm laughing. Like these fools are funny. But yeah, doc, thanks for calling in. You know what I mean? I mean Hell you're, yeah, bro. You're all a big... I want to know, all I want to let you know right now is, bro, fucking, echale ganas, bro. That's right. Appreciate you. Siempre, wey. Igualmente. Ahí está. You're, you're on Hoodstocks. Talk to us. Bailando con el tucan, bailando con el tucan. Bailando con el nazo, el tucatucanazo. Who's this? Yeah, there's just... Hello. Si, bueno. <clears throat> I guess, si, um, that was it? Yeah. On to the next. On to the next. It's always on to the next, huh? That's right. Yeah. If it's, uh, however life... However, life uh, presents it to you. Yes, of course. You got to get through that obstacle, mm -hmm. and then it's on to the next. Of course, now you got to keep moving. Life keeps going forward. You can't go backwards. You know, I've always said. You know, I, I've learned that from a, a good, you know, quote, a good message that I've heard in YouTube. You know, when you fall in life, you want to fall forward. You know, in order that way you can see even where you're falling. You know, what I mean? where you're going, instead of going backwards. You know. 
So yeah, on to the next. Keep going forward. We're only going to keep growing. The business is going to keep expanding. You know, I I just opened my little little one one bay shop, but uh, you know, like my father has two shops, two two bay shops, big ass shops. So, you know, my plan is to uh, keep growing. Every day I be I, I every day I strive to be a better person. You know, every every day I strive to be a better person than I was the day before. As a father, as a as a as a mechanic, as as you know, the boss, as you know, a son, everything in all aspects. Every day I strive to be a better person. That's the way I carry myself today because I know that shit's gonna get me somewhere. If your pops is listening right now, what would you? What the message you give him right now? Um, if you're listening right now, which I know he probably is, and if not listening, he's probably going to see this because my sisters are going to show it to him. But I just want to let him know that, you know, I talk all this uh, about him. And um, regardless of all the shit, uh, you know, I, I love him to death. Till this fucking day, he fucking supports me. If it wasn't for him, this business that I just opened wouldn't be there, to be honest with you. Because he's, he's, he's fucking, you know, when we, when, in December, when we got into it, um, we decided because we're always fighting, you know, we have uh, different ways of, of different mentalities. You know, he's old school. I'm new school. And it doesn't hit. It doesn't, you know. So we decided that uh, it was probably best for us to part ways and, and for him to help me do my own thing. And so he said, you know, I got you start he told me go to a house he's because he i knew he knew us you know I was, I was working at his shop with one of my boys brandon you know i had gotten him into the shop and um brandon uh was you know he was my right hand little man right there and uh when when shit went down he told me like what the fuck am i gonna do if you're getting like if you're not working there what the fuck am i gonna do i said you're coming with me i brought you in you're obviously my dad's not gonna want you there so you're coming with me whatever the fuck i do you're gonna do so Brandon fucking came with the smart idea and said, hey, my garage is set up like a shop. My father has a compressor. My father has tools. I have my tools. He said, why don't we just start fucking, you have customers, you have cars that you buy and sell. Why don't we go work at your house, at my house, he said. And I was like, you know what, Dick, that's a fucking great idea. You know what I mean? This is man right here. Huh? Shout out my boy. He's right there sitting <coughs> down. You know what I mean? I know you guys can't see him, but turn the camera on this nigga. Nah. But, um, he came up with that smart idea. He said, why don't we go fucking work out of my house? And I was like, fuck it, let's do it. January like third, boom, we showed up to this pad. The year, not the first it was the year. first of the year. It was it was yeah. Uh, you know what? It actually started in Yeah, because we did the the New Year's and then the next day, yes, we started fucking working out of his pad. We said fucking we started taking everything over there. Boom, 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 boom. Started working on cars, tune ups, oil changes, this, that, spark plugs, fucking Fuck water pumps. Yeah, whatever we got, you know, we'd fucking take it and we started doing it. So the thing is with me is I move fast. And I, I I make a lot of noise, straight up. Like, I'm fucking, how do I say that? Like, I'm, uh, wherever I come in, like, it, it, you oh, can, no, he's there. yeah, you know I'm here. Like, when I come in, it's fucking, get to business. Like, I bring people around. Like, but anyway, so I brought a fucking business to a house. You know, this boy's, go, my boy's garage, you know? So I started fucking bringing all my custies, you know? Bam, every day, two, three, four different people. So I'm running a fucking shop out of a house. So guess what happened with the fucking neighbors? Yeah. The fucking neighbors across the street were, they called the fucking city and they said, oh, these motherfuckers, this third per, this, they told specifically a guy that doesn't live in this house wearing fucking mechanic fucking shirt and pants, you know, like a mechanic came into this house and all of a sudden there's fucking people coming out the back and in and out the back with cars like he's fucking you know uh, servicing people's vehicles out of a house so the city came one day and mind you i buy and sell cars also right i was in the middle of fucking making a fucking sale it was a 2014 yaris i had with 100 uh 10, 000 miles you know fucking sick ass little toyota yaris gas saver i had it up for like fucking 5800 six grand you know well you know good price i'm fucking selling it to this guy right and at a fucking nowhere midday, this was around, not midday, maybe like around 11 a.m., fucking city pulls up in a F-150. Boom, pulls up and just stops. And the guy I was selling it to looked at the truck, looked at me, and he goes, is everything okay with the car? Is there something I need to know? Like, you know, they right away start thinking, like, maybe this is stolen, you know. I don't know what the fuck he thought. But um, I was like, oh, no, no, he's here for something else. So I walked up to the guy. And I'm like, can I help you, sir? He's like, is the house owner here? I was like, no, sir, he's working. He's like, is, a, is a, the wife here? And I said, no, sir. 
I was like, he's like, then who's here? I was like, just me and the son. And then he's like, well, you might be the the one I'm looking for. And I was like, okay, what's what's going on? And he's like, all right, well, I have a fucking case open. I have a complaint about uh, somebody coming in here and, uh, you know, servicing vehicles in the garage, in the driveway, you know, uh, parking a lot of different cars outside. The neighbors are complaining that they can't park in their street because you're fucking bringing in all these cars. And, um, you know, I ended up fessing up. I was like, you know what? Yeah, that's me because I didn't want to get the house in trouble. I didn't want to get them in trouble. So I told the guy I was real honest. Like, I like to carry myself that way. So I was real honest with him. I said, look, you know, brother, I left my father's shop because I wanted to see if I can generate enough money to get my own shop. You know, and I came here and they opened the doors for me and they allowed me. And I told them I've been here for three months now. And, you know, I'm, I, I believe I'm ready for a shop. So he was like, okay, well, you got to stop this shit today. And yeah. I told him, you know what? I got fucking, I had a, a 26 in Mercedes C300 that I owned that I bought at the auction with a bad motor that I had pulled the motor out of and we were rebuilding it. And um, I told him, look, I got that Mercedes in the back. The motor's out. I got to fucking finish rebuilding it, putting it in. So long, he's like, okay, well, how many days do you need? It was This was on a Monday, right? I told him, give me till Saturday. And he goes, you know what? I'll give you till Tuesday of the following week. That's like nine days, eight days, right? So he was cool as fuck, the guy. I told him, all right, cool. You know, I told him, what do you need when you come? He's like, you need no cars to be here. I need, I need it to look like, because right now it looks like a shop. He said, because I have all my shit there. And it looked like a motherfucking shop. You know, oil fucking racked up, all the filters, fucking toolboxes, fucking jacks, you know, all the shit. You look like a shop. So he's like, I need this to look like a normal garage, and only the owner and his son can work on their own personal vehicles. So I was like, all right, cool. You know, I'll get that shit done. Don't worry. So I take off. I go to my boy fucking uh, Aleppo's shop, Colima's Tires, right down Fillmore, and I'm telling him, like, hey, my boy, like, you know, the city just hit me, and I need to find a shop. And, you know, him being a good friend, he was like, hey, you know, I'll rent you a spot right here. We have a business, uh, automotive business license. I'll bring you a spot. We'll put up a lift for you and you can work out of here. And I was excited. I was like, fuck yeah. All right. That's it. We're doing it. You know, we're going to do that. And one of my other boys was there, Castro, Jesus. He was there and he overheard everything, but he didn't say nothing. He was quiet. Yeah, he ran a big play on that one, dog. So he was quiet, right? So I take off. I take off and uh, like an hour later, I get a phone call from Castro. I'm like, hey, what's up, bro? He's like, hey, I overheard you guys talking about you want a shop. And I'm like, yeah, what about it? He's like, right here down the street on Lewis in front of St. Joseph's where they have the flower shop and the tin shop. He's like, next door, the food just got kicked out by the city because he didn't have a fucking license. He's like, so the lady is looking for somebody to go in that's responsible. And I told him like, bro, you have to put in a good word for me. I already knew the spot. I was like, bro. Call her right now. Let her know I want it. Jump on it. Long story short, this fool jumped on it. Told her this was like on Tuesday, Wednesday. I met her up Friday, and we sat down and we talked and we said, you know, like, hey, I told her I want this place, you know. And I, she knew about my dad, how he has businesses and how he's, you know, successful. And so she, you know, she was like, all right, you know, you seem like you know what the fuck you're doing. Like, let's do it, you know. No credit check, no none of that. She just straight up said, give me some cash to fucking first month, last month, and get you in, and let's go. Hey. And you know, I was I had some money stacked up, so I fucking jumped on on that, you know, and uh, shit just fucking spiraled from there. It's fucking, you know, I um, I ended up uh, going, uh, I ended up going on a fucking shopping spree for tools because I I wanted to you know have all everything I needed for my business. So I spent about five thousand dollars, about forty eight hundred to be exact, on tools alone, just tool kits, different types of uh, you know special tools and shit. Um, um, the shop came with a lift already. Um, it, came with, it came in with a couple of things that, you know, you need to require to, to have the shop, like uh, a press for bearings. It came in with the fucking cart for the oil, like the oil catcher. It came, it came with a lot of different little things that made me save some money. But overall, it took me at least like 10 to 12 grand to open up that shop, you know. And um, shit, dude, it's been flooded with work since I opened up last. It's been about two weeks at the most right now, bro. And <coughs> been flooded with work bro it's crazy i want everybody to give it up for carlos ramirez baby <clears throat> it's been a good story bro it's been a long one it's been a for some people a slow one yeah it's you know i honestly but, wanted to do one hour but you were like nah can you break you know he's like break it down right we're at four hours bro i know that's what i'm saying yeah 
So how can people support you, bro? Um, how can people support me? Um, I don't want to get extremely flooded with any work, but if anybody needs any help with uh, any servicing repairs, or is anybody, if anybody's looking for a vehicle, a used vehicle, you know, anywhere between five to twenty grand, um, I can get you damn near anything between a Honda Civic to a Ferrari if you want. You know what I mean? I can get anything. Um, I can fix anything between a fucking anything from a fucking RC car fucking lawnmower all the way through to a fucking lambo i've worked on maseratis i've worked on a lamborghini i'm a sh you know i didn't work on it but i've you know i've done you know i've worked on high-end cars like i can do anything i've worked on anything you know I'm not scared of anything so anything anybody ever needs you can call me and give me you know get a quote for me and i guarantee you my quote will be a lot better than whoever else is doing your work and my work speaks for itself you know i don't do no bullshit work you know what i mean like i've been doing this my whole life i take pride in what i do you know what i mean my name my initials are on my business cr you know carlos ramirez so you know i i take pride in it and that shit so i love doing helping people i love doing good work because i love when people you know tell other people you know when hey you know i'm gonna refer you to this so and so i love that you know what i mean because i don't have to go out there and fucking do promotion i don't i don't do none of the advertising you know on my own just doing good work brings you more work bro you know word of mean? mouth that's it dog it's simple it's simple so if anybody check it out i want to ask you guys right now if you sat through all four hours of this interview put up some flames Put up some uh, fire emojis, right? And then I want to ask you, after everything you've been through, brother, who are you, bro? Who am I? Who Who are you? Like, what do you mean? Like, like today, 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 I am the father that I wished. I always had to my kids. Never touched my kids. Never yelled at my kids. I have a 13-year-old son. He's turning 14. He's my, he's my sidekick. He's my best friend. He's my, bro. I, I literally, I, I hit him up before coming in and talked to him about what we were gonna talk about, and we ran through like, this is what you're gonna say. This is what you don't say. This is like this motherfucker is so smart, like mature that. You know, there's times where we sit and we talk about fucking life and it's just fucking crazy how smart he is. You know, today I, I get to fucking be the the father that I've always wanted to my kids. That's yeah. who I am today. Today I'm um that mechanic in the block that that on is honest. You know what I'm saying? That fucking does shit right, that ain't going fucking doing some janky shit on you. Cause there's a lot of motherfucking mechanics that do some dirty shit, dog. I know a lot of them, bro, and it, and it fucking sucks because they put a bad name out there for us. But you know what? People know who the good ones are and who the bad ones are. You know what I mean? You only get, you know what I mean? You know, like you, when you met us, you knew, yeah. dog. Like, you. it's not only you, dog. There's a thousand people out there that know my father like that, that, that sees us, sees all the way we operate, and they say, you know what? This is the spot because these people don't fucking, they take pride. They... They're not it, like it's crazy, but yeah, we're in it for the money. But we we like helping people. You know, I get a kick out of helping somebody, dog. That shit makes my fucking day, and my father does too. You know what I mean? When when my father, when somebody asks him, like, hey, you know what? I can't pay you fucking four hundred. Can I do three hundred and pay you hundred when I get paid again? And my dad's like, you know what? Yeah, that's fine. You know, and and that's the type of shit we like to do. You know, we like to be able to help somebody that's in need somebody that needs to help and, and i'm not gonna sit here and say like right now everybody's gonna call me and be like oh fucking do me an oil change and i'll pay you next week like that's i'm not you know yeah but like i'm not don't hit me up with that type of shit but uh it, it's just the way we are bro we're honest people we're fucking we're just my father's a good person you know what i mean and i, I, is, I is, is it the is it the mexicano culture is it what what is it is it is it because you're mexican bro like is it i, I don't know i really don't know if I, it, I don't want to say it's because i'm mexican i i just want to say that that's just the way me and my family carry ourselves i, I can't i can't no. say that that's, that's mexican because i'm sure it is i'm sure it is but because there's mexicanos that might give you some bad work 
Well, yeah, but but yeah. <laughs> I'm not trying to put you in a fucking bind right here, but yeah, I'm just saying, but you like, are. No. yeah, but I am, but I, but but, you are. but I am, but I, I, hey, it doesn't matter. Let, let me just speak for him, bro. Yeah. It doesn't matter what race you are. You know, I mean, if you nope. if you're competent and you take care of everybody, yeah, you know, no matter what race you are, you know what I mean. You can come in there with a translator and we'll fucking we'll help you out. I've had people like that, you know, Asian people pull up with the fucking their phone and they just show it to me and then it just says what the fuck they said in their language and it just says it in English and you know I have deaf customers bro so cool as fuck like you know I've learned fucking little sign language because of them like they come to me directly when I've been at my dad's shop and they look for me because I'm the one that communicates with them and they already know you know they come to me and like they do this little language little signs and like oh oil change got you yeah no trip I'll give them a chair and sit down like you know just crazy bro it's just I want everybody to give it up for Carlos Ramirez. Let's go, baby. We out of here, baby. Love you guys, dog. If you lasted all this time, I love you guys. Fucking I love you guys. Dude, I love you guys. We are out of here. It's wild, bro. Hey, thank you guys. Thank you. Not hit four hours, but you know what? I got the I got the mouse on me. Hold on. Yeah.